Well, now to one of our most popular features. Um, I mean, this could even rival monkey news one day. It, I mean, it is monkey news. It's, it's <laughs> you know, it's news from the point of view of a monkey, a shaved monkey. It's Carl Pilkerton's diary. Oh, he's written it down. Yeah. <laughs> Was that the jingle, or were you just well, yeah, just sure. annoyed about sure. something? <laughs> <laughs> okay. <laughs> Went and did the podcast. We had a meeting after. I don't like meetings as I can't keep focused on what people are talking about. I think Ricky has the same problem as after 25 minutes he was trying to wrestle me. <laughs> I tried to do what spiders do and stayed still as if I was dead. But Ricky <laughs> just stayed on top of me, not moving. A bit like when you see one of them big snakes swallowing a sheep. Ricky got bored and released me. I went home thinking, why had I left my old job for this? A homeless man asked me for some money, but I didn't feel like I should treat him as I felt that he probably had a better day than me. <laughs> oh, God. Suzanne called me to say she'd gone for a haircut and that she'd meet me in the supermarket. I went to the supermarket, but she wasn't there. I called her and she said she was near the fruit aisle. I went to the fruit aisle and she wasn't there. Turns out she was in a different supermarket <laughs> on the other side of town. And that if I'd listened to her properly, I'd have known that. I didn't want to say that I... Well, you just went to the first supermarket you thought of, as opposed to listening to what supermarket... I'm in the supermarket. All right, bye. I didn't want to say that I hadn't heard her properly, because my ears were ringing a bit from the wrestling from earlier. <laughs> 25 minutes later, I met up with Suzanne. Her haircut wasn't that bad. Normally her haircuts are followed by an argument between us as she pays over the odds for some daft haircut that's the latest style. Brilliant. I wish she'd take a picture out of a magazine or ask for a style rather than letting the hairdresser do what she wants. I said I only tell her to do this as she's got a square head and a close cut <laughs> hairdo makes it look squarer. She said, what do you think of this cut? I said it looked alright as I couldn't be bothered arguing about it. It's weird writing a diary. I don't know who thought of doing one of these first. The last time I did one was at school. They used to get you to do it so they could keep an eye on whatever you were up to. My diary used to say the same thing every night. Got home, went to the shop to get potatoes, bread, milk. Went home, watched telly, went to bed. I think I might have gone to Twiggy's Dance Club just so I had something <laughs> different to write. You've not told us about Twiggy's Dance Club. It's just, uh, you know, I sort of, when I was a kid, I sort of gave everything a bit of a go. I did boxing and that, didn't I? Gave that a go. Um, for about 45 minutes and uh, yeah a mate a mate sort of said oh you know you're into your dancing your robotics and that you're doing, <laughs> doing your body popping right body popping and that he said uh, you ought to come to Twiggy's and um, I went there um, but I didn't go in it was shut it was <laughs> It was, they, they were just having, like, loads of toilet rolls delivered. I think, like, <laughs> they they were, like, using it as a storage place for toilet rolls and that. So I said, oh, I've come to have a dance. And like, oh, not tonight. Come back tomorrow. <laughs> I, I never went back. <laughs> Brilliant. Oh, oh, what, a waste, what a waste of an anecdote. <laughs> right. <laughs> Brilliant. Just to recap, you're convinced, then, that the teachers are asking you to keep diaries so they can keep tabs on you. Um, and then to continue the diary, as there were more problems happening on the estate, they started to add Saturday and Sundays to the school diary to keep an eye on what we were doing at the weekend. I struggled to fill it on a Sunday, as the shop I got potatoes and bread from was shot on a Sunday. <laughs> I had to go over to Shepherd's Bush to meet someone. I got the tube. There was a badly burnt man on the tube. It's amazing how the body can continue through quite a lot of bad stuff. It got me thinking about how much stuff you could remove in your body, one by one, without dying. If it was a competition, the cockroach would win, as it can live for a week without a head. I just mean, like, say, say, if, you know, they're running out of ideas for TV programmes and that, right? They get someone who isn't well. They go, look, do you mind if we make a programme on you? And what they do, they sit them in the bed, and they go, right, what we're going to do now is take out the heart, but replace it with a pacemaker. Right. No, 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 no. Sorry, people with pacemakers don't have their heart taken out and a pacemaker popped in. All right then. Um, some sort of machine. What What I'm getting to is. Have you been playing Operation? What I mean is. <laughs> what I mean is the big finale would just be a head, chatting with loads of wires going into it, and it's like, look what we can do with science. Good. <laughs>
That's what the programme's called. <laughs> it's the same every week. The volunteer is just ahead with loads of wires coming out Look of it. Look what we could do with science. And he's going, Goodbye. Oh, I feel ill. Got some post delivered to me today. It was... <laughs> oh, this is This great. makes it in the diary. Got some post delivered to me today. It was addressed to Mr. Dilkington. <laughs> I got some post delivered to me today. It was addressed to Mr. Dilkington. <laughs> I opened it and the first sentence read, Dear Mr. K. Dilkington, you're one of our most valuable customers. I put it in the bin. Thought I would learn some new words, as Steve always says I don't use enough different words. I read in the Fortean Times that the word "wew" means... An ugly female ghost with drooping breasts. <laughs> what do you mean? Is what? that how I'm, am I pronouncing Who's that right? Who's using that word? Who is using that word? It was just W E W E. Let's call it a woo. Mm -hmm. An ugly female ghost with drooping breasts. Mm -hmm. I think I'm right when I say there are too many words in the world. I don't think I will ever get round to using the word woo. Watched a health programme. Wasn't watching it properly, but heard some doctors say that we only get so many heartbeats in a lifetime, so don't do too much exercise. I told Suzanne, and she said I probably hadn't heard it right. We got talking about death. Suzanne said she didn't like thinking about it. I said she might end up being a woo. <laughs> I was chuffed as I'd managed to use my new word. I went to the supermarket to get tonight's tea. On the way, I stopped and looked in the fishmongers at all the different fish they had in the window. It's like a child in, like in one of those kids' TV shows. I know! Mr. Kil Mr. Pilkington went to the fishmonger. He stopped and looked at all the fish in the window. Hello, Mr. Dilkington, they said. <laughs> there was a newspaper clipping stuck on the glass about a two-headed fish that they've made in Taiwan. I don't see the point in doing this as a fish... Having two heads ain't gonna solve the world's hunger problems, as the head is the bit you throw away. Invent a fish with two bodies, and I'd say well done. Good point, though, isn't it? Suzanne watched one of her favourite TV programmes. I've told her the tally only goes on if there's something she wants to watch. If there's nothing on, she has to talk to me about stuff I've learnt. Like Descartes. Watched a programme on him the other day. He is the one who said something like, I know I'm about because I dream. Doesn't work for everything because ants don't sleep. <laughs> I don't know if I'd like that or not. You don't know if you would like it if you didn't ever not sleep. not sleeping. It's just one long day. I don't know. don't know how you put up with that. Do you think it'd be a good idea? No. Why not? What's going on? As you said, it would get a bit boring. You know, your sleep is your rest, your time off. It get, it, it it helps you uh, detoxify. It helps you sort of um, think things through on a subconscious level. It, it, you know, but don't it, you ever get it where... I mean, sometimes it's brilliant to have a sleep when you're tired, but don't you sometimes yeah, feel that's like... that's the best time to have a sleep when yeah. you're tired. No, yeah. but sometimes when you go to bed and you're not that tired and you're kind of thinking, oh, I'm going to waste some hours of my life now and I'm not really in the mood for this. Well, that's thing. just wishing you had longer on this earth doing creative things. I mean, if you didn't have to sleep, you could spend more time talking to a tortoise and going to the toffee shop. <laughs> Well, it's that time again. If you'd give us the jingle, please. Oh, Jim Pantry Dave. Fucking ears! Okay, now that surely cannot be fair on anyone's ears listening. <laughs> <laughs> right, um, ages ago, right, about, about the 1950s. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. There was this gangster knocking about. And do you know how, like. Were they called Hairy Fingers? Do you know, like, a lot of gangsters like to get into gambling and that? Yeah, yeah. And, uh, you know, like, all these, all these peers and that, all these, all these mates who are, like, gangsters and stuff, mm. they've all bought horses, right? Like, they tech, you know, tech racing and they make money from them and that, don't they? Yeah. Mm. 
So anyway, he and was Chuckles like, Seagull was no different. And and he was like, yeah, that's uh, that's a good thing to get into. I might might get into a bit of that, right? So he gets himself this horse, right? And it, there's a big race coming up. That's why he sort of it's a bit of a last minute. And the and the jockey turns up and it's fine. He's a human jockey and it's fine. Excellent. Okay, well that was another so, podcast. So anyway, so um, please listen. Oh, hang next. On, there's more. There's more. Oh, hang on. on. So oh. so anyway, so. Uh, this big race is coming up. It's yeah. like, I've got to be involved in this yeah, because definitely. I can make a lot of money out of me also. Choose the jockey wisely then. So he says to his, like, mate, he said, look, uh, I've got myself a horse and that. He said, we just need a jockey, get someone oh, yeah. to sort it out and yeah. what have you so we can get in this race. So, Go to the jockey so club. Loads his mate's like, yeah, all right, I'll have, a, I'll have a word and that, have a look round and that, see if there's anyone decent. And there's, the, the good there. thing about jockeys is there's never been a shortage of jockeys because a lot of them don't make the grade. So there's 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 always too many jockeys to go round. Normally always too many human jockeys. Yeah, there's you, there's never a problem getting jockeys. Fun. Go on. So anyway, so he comes Was that back. true in the 50s as well? Absolutely. It's always been it's true. It's always been true. It's always, it's always been true. There's no, there's no lack of jockeys. So... It's sort of close shot. People are trying to do it and they don't make the grade, so. But in yeah. the 50s, from your knowledge, there was never, there was not, like in 1951, a shortage of jockeys for just one year. Absolutely never. I've known about <laughs> okay, that. Fine, I'm you, quite yeah. keen. Right. Go on. So, anyway, right? So, his mate says, look, I'm having a problem getting a jockey. Seems odd oh, because no, Ricky's just weird. been saying. No, 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 he's no, just no, been no, saying no, it's no. not a problem. What do you mean? So. Just because the main problem was. Go on. A lot of jockeys were aware of this gangster and were saying, I'm not getting involved with this guy. The chances are, I won't get paid. You know, is a gangster. It's not no, worth it. No, you would do it if it was a gangster asking you. You'd be scared of the consequences. So anyway, he's saying, look, don't be coming to me with problems and that, right? I've got the horse. I want it in the race. Sort it out. So they're like, oh, but boss. And he's like, don't give me any of that. Exactly. They do what he says, so any jockey would do it. Go on. So anyway, so the day before... The big race, yeah. <laughs> left it to the last minute. Okay, but yeah. fine. And, uh... He says, have you, have you got a jockey then? And they're like, yeah, but, and he's going, D don't worry about it, have you got a jockey? Yeah, but, and he's like, well, look. He wants what, to what? say, sure, he wants, yeah. So, yeah, uh, yeah. he's saying, has he ridden their horses before on that? He said, well, yeah, he has, but mainly, and he's like, like brilliant. And he goes, yeah, but mainly in, like, a in circus. In the, in the jing. No, like, in, in, the, in the circus and that. <gasps> he'd worked, he'd, he'd worked with horses and stuff. In the circus. It's fine. Yeah. So he's yeah. like, that's, fine. that's enough, that's, that's all I need to know. Well, they'd be too heavy, because circus... So People so are quite built, aren't they? They're, so, they're said, being so, a bit heavier than the jockey, because the jockeys are about eight and a half stone. He said, brilliant. Get him down there and that, right? Yeah. Anyway, the race happens. He didn't want to meet him beforehand? He wasn't worried no about No point. Not no. bothered. No. As far as he's concerned, he's, it's put all his, he's putting his money on it and what have you. Yeah. Right? Sure. What happened is they were trying to make him put on the jo jockey outfit. Yeah. But for some reason it didn't fit that well. Sleeves that, too was, short, legs too, too long. It's that sort of problem. Okay. So they let him, like, you know, wear his stuff that he wore in the circus and that, because it's, it's, it's comfortable with that, yeah, he's happy yeah. with it, do you know yeah, what I mean, that's what he's happy with. Yeah. Anyway, race starts and what have you, uh, this horse straight out of the trap and that, high speed, right, this, this jockey's got a really big grin on his face, he's loving it, right, everyone's cheering, going, who is this, who's this jockey here? Yeah. It's amazing, never seen him before and yet, look at him. But they can see his face, clearly. Anyway, gangster's happy in that, because he's, he's one. But I just want to say, the crowd, the crowd can see the jockey, can they? What? The crowd can. I mean, it's, it's yeah, but he's so fast and what have <laughs> the you. The blur is a blur. It's all a blur. He's really, he's good at it. I mean, apparently right. he was close to falling off, and people were like, "He's, he's gone. He's a goner." Right. But he's got such a good reach that he managed to grab hold. Oh, of the good reach. Oh. And right. well, they could tell he was smiling. They could tell he was smiling, but they couldn't see the the detail of his face. Is that right? Just well, to clarify it's just, that. It's just blur and that. Sure, just but they could tell teeth. he was smiling. Yeah, 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 yeah. They knew he was happy. At the end of it, do you know, like the winner. Sort of rides around the crowd, but yeah. like, sort of you know show off and what have you. Yeah, and all the women are there. Do you know, like women are all dolled up at these events. Sure, they've yeah. all got big big hats on. Uh, Sometimes they got through on those hats. Yeah. <laughs> okay. <laughs> right. Yeah. <laughs> right. Um, one, one of the women, In one the of the women, particularly oh, Carmen God. Miranda was very yeah, popular. Yeah, yeah. One of the women had like, like you say, fruit and what have you on it, yeah. a little, little banana. Right, right. some kind oh, of they're Cuban They're not woman. real, they're not real though, the hats, though, they're, 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 <laughs> they're, they're not real they're, fruit, is it? No, yeah. of course not, never. So but experience. I don't know who, I thought they wore those sort of kind of Cuban yeah, entertainment but even, shows, even, I didn't realise they wore them yeah, at events. Yeah, even if it's like a big event, you know, you might have a hat with fruit and it, it's sort of joke, but it, but it's, it's fake fruit because it would, it would, it would perish. Well, this, this jockey didn't understand that. He'd never seen false fruit. I don't understand. But why did, the, why did the jockey suddenly, why was he so desperate for fruit? I don't, I don't understand. So anyway, so meanwhile, the gangster's collecting his 500 quid winnings. Yeah. Right? He's over the moon. 
Yeah. He kicks off because of this woman with the fruit. Yeah, I don't understand. I still don't understand no, why the jockey would go. Everyone from... noticed. Jockey, little monkey fella. Oh, that makes sense. If he was a monkey, that would make sense. Yeah. What year was this guy? It, it was it was 1950s, and that's where the saying comes from about you know, like in Cockney slang, 500 quid is a monkey. He he sort of put you know he put a monkey on it, and it all goes back to the time. So when... So this happened in this in in, in England. In this country, yeah, yeah in the 1950s. So someone could well still be alive so, that we could easily yeah. contact. That well, would that's it. We always you know, there's events. no time length on this monkey news. If you've got any, if it's history, you know, if yeah. it goes back. Or if it's made up, bullshit. Just, just send it in. If it's so, bollocks, uh, send it in. Bollocks, if it's actually you bollocks, send please send it in. That's this week's Monkey News. RickyGervais.com Well, that's the end of uh, the tenth podcast in the series of twelve. Only two more to go. Um, one more hour of the uh, the drivel that is um, the thoughts of Chairman Pilkington, or Dilkington, as he should now be known. Um, this uh, podcast was brought to you by Positive Internet. Those great guys at Positive Internet host the world's number one podcast. It's goodbye from me, Ricky Gervais, Stephen Merchant. If you want to get in touch, remember it's podcast at rickygervais.com. And Carl Pilkington. Right. Hello and welcome to number 11 in our series of 12 podcasts with me, Ricky Gervais. Hello, uh, Stephen Merchant. Hello. And Carl Pilkington. Right. Now, Carl, you have become a phenomenon. Okay. Right. This uh, is a, a news story that's gone everywhere. It started, I think, in New York, Reuters, and then that's been taken up by every Reuters network everywhere, India, uh, all over Australia, England. OK, here it is. The headline is, Podcast makes Britain an unlikely internet icon. Britain there, B-R-I-T-O-N. OK? Now, this is uh, the story by Mark Egan. And it was, uh, came out of um, New York originally. Unemployed British radio producer Carl Pilkington has become an unlikely superstar by using the medium of podcasting for his bizarre statement about eating an animal's private parts. Remember that? <laughs> yeah, it was. It was more about like that reality show. That right. well, it says that here. It was during a discussion on yeah. the Gervais show about a reality TV show where contestants were asked to eat an animal's penis. Uh, Pilkington. Um, made internet history while talking about this, it says, right? First, he said he could not eat animals in the morning because he had a delicate stomach. He then proclaimed, using the British I could eat a knob at night, OK? <laughs> His knob soundbite has become so popular that a Google search for I could eat a knob at night yields more than half a million listings, OK? <laughs> Among them are T-shirts featuring the slogan, OK, and Pilkington's bald head, Selling for seventeen dollars. Oh. Why did I have to make a point about your bald head? I, I, I don't know. What's what, why is that getting a little mention? <laughs> wow! <laughs> that doesn't matter. I see the T-shirt. Have a look at it. You know, I mean, what what is bald? I'm not buying one then. It's not going to make any difference. Either you want a T-shirt with me, I don't know. You don't. It's not an issue. <laughs> all it says is but among also, them are these... T-shirts featuring the slogan and Pilkington's bald head. I also liked it when it said Pilkington plays the village idiot on the Ricky Gervais show. OK. Now, plays a village idiot suggests that he thinks you're a character, that character being a village idiot. The problem is, the fact that you're not a character, to me, suggests that you are just a village idiot. A global village idiot. Yeah. Mm. Now... Just on, uh, the, on the websites, though, when it said there's loads of websites about eating a knob at night. Yeah. Have they looked at each website and gone, yeah, that's to do with the podcast? Yeah. Or is it just like gays and that? So no, I love a bit of knob at night. <laughs> it's, a good... it's a valid question. It's a valid question. That's why you're an internet icon, Carl, because you say things like that. After Gervais mused on the show that the soundbite could be used in a dance remix, it took just a few days for the internet to be awash with songs using the soundbite as a hook. So what do you think of that, Carl? Oh, uh, what well, I mean, is, is it big in, in India? Well, I don't know. It's all, it goes around the world. This is a story. I know, but I just can't the believe world. the problems that if I was in India, I wouldn't be getting upset about someone in London talking about a knob at night with the problems they've got. Well, I don't think anyone's getting upset in India. No, he's just saying, saying that the information. I can't world. imagine people walking around India. You know, have, you, have you heard that song, Knob at Night? <laughs> I can't imagine that happening. With the, you know, they're hungry in that, and it's dusty and everything. <laughs> That's your don't... image of India, is it? They're hungry and it's dusty. I, I, I assume it's. You know, the parts of India that aren't dusty 
and in poverty. There is a lot of poverty in India, but there was also, you know, yeah, but these parts of the major civilization and uh, uh, and the people uh, that, that that live in apartments with with. Uh, uh, computers, they probably might tune in. But but I don't think it's an issue all over the world, is it? Because there's some places where they eat dogs. They'd go, no, but night, not a problem. <laughs> <laughs> might not be a bad thing. You know, why, why is that out on a t-shirt? I had one last Wednesday. <laughs> not, not an issue. What, what, what do you mean? No, <laughs> that's what I'm saying. Yeah, again, if there are cannibals listening, if there's, you know, in places that, that you wouldn't travel to, and that they get hold of a little laptop and an iPod, and they listen to that, I can eat a knob at night. Then they're going, what's the problem? What's the big deal? We, all, we, we love a knob at night. Yeah, we so love yeah. a little knob at night, yeah. Bollocks in the morning, knob at night. That's the rule. But what about the fact that they're saying you're a phenomenon, a global phenomenon? Because when you were, you know, a tiny little um, round-headed mank mm -hmm. growing up in Manchester, you could not surely have ever anticipated that you would one day be described as a phenomenon, an international phenomenon. But, you know... Uh... At the end of the day, I went to that school, you know, with a kid with a big head and webbed hands. Now he should be being talked about. <laughs> what is maybe he doesn't want to be talked about? If if you've grown up with a big head and webbed hands, the last thing you want to be is talked about. He wants to he wants to put on he a wants pair to blend of, into society. He yeah. wants to put put on a bit of uh, a pair of mittens and paint his head like a crash helmet, so people think, oh, it looks like a big head, but it's probably just a crash helmet. Yeah, just go about his business. Yeah. Unnoticed. He won't get stopped on a bike or anything. Yeah, but I say if you've got something that's a bit weird, use it. That's what we're doing. That's exactly what me and Steve are doing. We have got something that's a bit weird, and we're using it. And I want to uh, speak to the people all around the world. Thanks for listening. But how famous can you make Carl Pilkington? Are you a journalist? Please write about this for people who probably haven't listened to Carl. Uh, d talk about Carl Pilkington. Put a little poster up in your window. I love Carl Pilkington. Print a badge. Give it away. Email your friends. Tell uh, tell one person about this podcast and let them discover the the amazing beauty that is Carl Pilkington's mind. Right. As ever, Rick, there are hundreds and thousands of emails coming in. Um, people contributing all kinds of stuff, pictures as always, and uh, little video clips that I think might be of interest. And of course, as ever, lots of questions for Carl as well, just to sort of try and tap into his brain, see what's going on there. Question from uh, Jade Ramira. Carl, what would you change if you were in charge of what kids are taught in school? Right, you know, because, I mean, your school experience was a bit iffy. You got very bored, didn't you? You got very disillusioned by school. Yeah. What I'd do, right, is, uh, instead of keep sort of teaching kids about two and two and that, she's four, right? <laughs> well done. Um, Show off. <laughs> um, I think she'd be asked more questions that make them think rather than something... That has just got an answer. I totally agree. I totally agree. Right. So, yeah, like, yeah, yeah. Uh, teaching them the the the, the quest for knowledge, uh, inflaming their imagination, but just freaking them out a bit as well. Just going <laughs> like, See, I knew that's where it was going. Because <laughs> yeah. as soon as you started talking, Rick, I was thinking you're thinking some of the big existential or philosophical questions. You yeah. Know, what it, does it mean to be human? What does it mean to interact with other exactly. humans? Exactly. To be a human. Or, or, or teaching them sort of like philosophy on a basic level that you know, teaching them the love. For learning, so yeah. you know, get them back to a roots level, so they want to learn, and then they will learn, as opposed to just teaching them facts. Whereas he, he was thinking, <laughs> freak him out a bit. <laughs> yeah. No, just like you know, like I read the other day, um, and someone sent it in on email, like how there's a, a, a dishwasher that's been found on Mars. Rubbish. Whoa, what? Right? But it's not true. So, so tell them that. But and it's say, not true. Go home and write about it. How did that happen? But it didn't happen. The, well, it did happen. It was in a science magazine. No, it didn't happen. There's not in, a dishwasher a on Mars. Why not? Because how, me, why not? Why did it? How did it get there? But we're always sending like rubbish out there and that. It's like not dishwashers. What do you think the the council take it away and they go? Where can we put it? Well, the uh, the tip's full. We, well, where's the nearest thing we can dump this? Mars, I imagine. No, but the same way that fella who I don't know was it two Christmases ago when he was messing about saying I can get stuff to Mars and all that. Um, he did it wrong because he did it on like Boxing Day and I just think nobody's concentrating. No one wants to work on that day. It's kind of like, you know what I mean, they're going to do stuff sort of half assed aren't they, sure. on Boxing yeah. Day. So, it didn't really get there, I don't think, but it crash-landed. What right? are you talking about? What was he trying to do? He was sending something up to Mars. Yeah, that little, that little fella that wanted to get something on Mars, and it, it, it got... Probe, you mean? And it didn't open properly. 
yeah. it got there, didn't it? But, but the thing is, it got there, it didn't open properly, no one's been back to pick it up. And what I'm saying yeah. is, we're saying about going to Mars as our next planet, it's a tip. There's loads of stuff that's been no. flirted up there. No, it's not. <laughs> like it has, talking it's, about... it's, all, it's just all, like, that probe thing is still there, rotting away. Yeah. So, ipso facto, there is a dishwasher on Mars, we've yeah. settled that. Why okay. would they have a dishwasher on Mars? Would they take the dishwasher up with the space shuttle in case they had dinner parties? What are you talking about? I just think they would have a little dishwasher in there. There's a lot of them. Tight space. You don't want to be- who's gonna do that? You know, that means- Do you know how much fuel it takes to move a kilogram? Yeah. Th- out of the Earth's atmosphere? So they're gonna take up a dishwasher, are they? Sorry, but what are they cooking up there, Carl? How many people does it take to fly a rocket? I... <laughs> how many people? Tell me how many people. Uh, well, it's either one monkey with a banana shoot that feeds it, or probably two or three humans. Right. Say it's three humans. Yeah. Now, there's three humans because they need one to steer it, one to, like, be going, yeah, we're all right. Yeah. One, one to make the... some more doves. One, one to one to stop at the petrol station no, to get what, more. Yeah. What I'm saying is, if you're going to start having a sink, then whoever's they washing up... They haven't got up, a sink. I know, because they've got a dishwasher. <laughs> He's got you there. But anyway, I'm not, I'm not going to go into that, but all I'm saying is teach kids things about, say to them, right, when you go home tonight, there was dinosaurs knocking about ages ago, how would you have lived with them? Get on with it, see you later. Well, they didn't, I've told you this before, you, you got a lot of your information from the Flintstones and One Million Years BC with Raquel Welsh. There weren't dinosaurs knocking around where there were little fellas knocking around in furry pants. No, no, but just sort of saying to them, all right then, here's a different question. Go on then. Would it be better um, to have dinosaurs knocking about now whilst yeah. we're here? Because what... I, I put that in my diary the other day, like, that <laughs> when you think about it, there's a population problem. Yeah. There's too many of us. Yeah. We're saving people all the time. No one's allowed to get injured anymore. You've got to, you know, wear a helmet when you're on a bike. Yeah. The speed bumps to slow people down, zebra crossing, cures for illnesses. No one's dying anymore, right? Well, I think they are. Not not as many as they should be because yeah, the world's think, crowded. All I'm saying is, I it's think there's ca- still people dying. I think I think there's still people dying. Not that many though. Yeah, I think there's still a millions handful, of people a handful, dying. Apparently, a handful. Lo- yeah. Loads of people are living longer, and yeah. that's that's a problem. So, so what you I'm feel saying that is you should introduce Tyrannosaurus Rex into wandering say about, wandering London. Around. Just have them wandering around, just picking people off. That's what, just, just, you know, just sort of random and that. Because I, I don't know, I mean, I'm not wishing that anyone I know dies and that, but all I'm saying is, I don't know anyone who's died for ages. Right. Whereas if a dinosaur was knocking about, you'd go, oh, Neil, yeah. Neil's gone missing. Yeah. And, and Nora's you know, had her head bitten off by a... Whatever, I just yeah. think it, then it is survival of the fittest, which yeah. is, we've lost all that now. You don't even have to be fit to survive. You just keep sticking a new lung on you. <laughs> or... <laughs> Do you know what I mean? They, 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 can, they can do too much now to keep people going. They just keep sticking a new lung on ya! Question from Kevin. He says, Carl, other than the famous boxing match that you've often talked about, I know that took um, up about 20 minutes of your time, have you ever been in any other kind of fight? Uh, I don't suppose a, a slanging match. I think they're talking of ever been in a physical fight. Um, once that I can remember. It was over a, over a woman. <laughs> well, a girl. I was at school. Yeah. Um, and it was because, like, it's hassle, isn't it? right, relationships when you're younger. How you're old not, were you? Um, about seven. <laughs> <laughs> it was over a woman. <laughs> go on then. Yeah, go on. And there was this girl knocking about who, you know, she was, she was quite good looking, everybody liked. And, uh, my mate, he really liked her. And, uh... I, I didn't sort of ask her out on that, but she just sort of took a shine to me and stuff, right? And uh, didn't really go out with her properly. It's at, at that age where going out with someone is just like sort of going, all right, in the morning, do you know what I mean? You just sort of <laughs> nod your head. Yeah. And that. Anyway, there was some sort of school disco, <laughs> and um, they were playing Spin the Bottle or something, right? And uh, I sort of wandered over to see what was going on. And I stood on this girl's dress and put a hole in it. And she started crying. I was like, oh, I can't be dealing with this. Right? Come on, I, I, you know, what's up with you? It's a hole, what's up with you? And everyone's going, Carl, what are you doing? That's meant to be your girlfriend and that. You should be sort of saying, oh, I'm sorry, and giving her a hug and all that. And saying, it'll be all right, we'll sort the dress out. I said, oh, I can't be dealing with this. No. Right? So she's crying her eyes out. I said, it's over. 
Right. <laughs> <laughs> oh, it's it's over. You saying? Right. In the morning. <laughs> yeah. yeah. No yeah. more of that. Yeah. There's no more. Right. In the morning. So I go to the toilet. Right. And uh, this lad who fancies her comes in and goes, "You're out of order." You know. And I'm saying, "What are you on about?" So you, there's two seven-year-olds. Seven -year yeah. You're out of order. Keep out. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Cut it out. Show her a bit of bloody respect. But sorry, were you wearing trilbies? Yeah. <laughs> he put his cigarette out in the sink and he just said, leave it. <laughs> Get out of my face. <laughs> oh. so I, I just thought, I said, look, why are you getting involved? And I'm like, <laughs> why are you yeah. Yeah. Why are you getting involved? <laughs> and, oh, uh, and, it, and it was obviously like, because, you know, he, he fancied her and that. We yeah. had a bit of a fight in there. Yeah. Yeah. Um, I I accidentally, you know, sort of chipped his tooth on a sink. Right? Wow, is it like a proper... Sorry, this is like something from Lockstock and Two Smoking Barrels. Yeah. What are you talking about? Two seven-year-olds in a toilet. <laughs> so you put you put a hole in her dress. I don't know how that... What were I you wearing? Know, Football boots? On it. Just... <laughs> <laughs> how, did you, how did you make a hole in her dress? I don't know. It was like that, that sort of material. You were like, wearing winkle pickers. Like <laughs> crepe. You know what I mean? It was like a crepe dress or something. Yeah. Right. And that so... got a hole in it. So, so you're having a, and when you say you're having a fight, I mean, are you wrestling with it? You got he so arm a, locks, a little and head bit locks? of wrestling and sho shoving about and that. And it was an accident. I didn't sort of go right. I'm going to break your teeth or anything. It's just yeah. that I happened to push his head down, and and his tooth hit the sink, yeah. right? And it chipped and what yeah. have you. After that, like I, I sort of left there and stuff, and we had to go into assembly, uh, and there was a copper in there doing some presentation, saying, "Listen, kids, you know, don't get into trouble." Because we're out there and we'll get you, right? So sort of try to teach the kids young, not to get into any trouble and stuff. So I'm sat in the assembly room, thinking, oh god, there's a copper here talking, and it, like my mate's going to come in in a minute, like with a chipped tooth and everything. And, and questions are going to get asked. That's what kind of happened. I mean, the, the coppers didn't get involved. Yeah. <laughs> Did you turn your back on violence after that? Then? Yeah. Uh, well, well, could... he, he said you'll never take me alive, copper. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Um, so yeah, that, that was the sort of last fight. Brilliant. Some of the questions coming in now, Rick, are just I don't know what they're intending, what what response they're hoping for. Really, this is one from Rob. He just says, "I was just wondering, what are Carl's views on the human appendix?" What do you think, Carl? What do you think of the human appendix? Never worried about it. What? Well, no, I think Rob's point is that it's sort of pretty. Uh, Redundant now. The yeah. appendix is, used to be a, a, an organ that, that was packed with um, these uh, these enzymes that help break down things like cellulose. But because of our diet now, and because the uh, you know cooking and uh, and other things, we we don't need to eat a lot of cellulose. We don't eat very very low grade things like 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 rabbits, for example, huge appendix and cecum, and they they use it to break down the cellulose. They actually eat their own. Uh, feces to get it through again but we get a lot of nutrients out of food now we eat very rich food so we sort of don't need the appendix and also when something goes wrong with the appendix if it bursts it can infect you and you can die from it so sort of what's the point in having it we don't need it and it can only cause us harm that was the question I think that Rob was putting to you so now what are your thoughts on the human appendix so th this is kind of what we've talked about before where he always says that. He always says something like, oh, we've talked about this before. And, and the thing that he's talked about is nothing like it. Yeah. There's, there's never... Go on. No, but just like um, in the way that we've messed with our body and we've messed with the world too much. Yeah. If we've got an appendix, we, we must need it. If it's dangling about, right? Well, no, because such, such is the human evolution is uh, that... that as you said before, you know it's no longer based on survival of the fittest because we can we can fight nature and combat it. So our evolution, if you like, socially and and everything else, it, it, it is is been much faster than our biological yeah, but evolution. Yeah, what, what, what I mean is we've we've obviously interfered somewhere along the way, and well, we, well, we have, have interfered. Yeah, yeah. Well, we shouldn't have done because it's, mm. it's the same way. Like uh, if we, you know, if we didn't have planes and that. Would we have wings now? If we'd have no. needed to get about, <laughs> no. would we have had wings? No, is the answer's no. Next. No, but but you say that, but look at the way... Because he's right, is it? Because he's right. No, but all I'm saying is you see that little picture of like an ape to man. Yeah. At first, they're crawling about on all fours because probably yeah. you're looking for food, so you want to be down there. 
So right. if, you, if you're on both legs, yeah. you're missing stuff that's on the floor. What sort of time period do you think this... Because, I mean, we started, uh, pl you know, dabbling with a plane maybe a hundred years ago. So what sort of time period do you think this little thing who's scrabbling around looking for food I stood up and I walked? don't know. I, I sort of don't worry about time. Sort right. of behind, well, I'll tell you now, we wouldn't room. have wings now. If the Wright brothers had said, I'll oh, forget it, we wouldn't have wings now. What would happen? Right, here's, here's another question. This is one that I chuck out to kids as well. We were talking about education, teaching kids stuff. Sure. What would happen, right? Uh, we ruin this world, right? Goes wrong and that, right? They shut it down. They go, we're moving. We go to another planet. It's as simple as that <laughs> yeah. in his world. It's as simple as that. We can't go to uh, Mars because it's full of stuff that used it's to be in Dixon's. It's like a tip. Yeah. It's a nightmare. So we can't go there, we go somewhere else. So you find another planet, wherever it is, right? Yeah. Wherever um, it is, yeah, easy. Something that I've always wondered about, if we do that, do we start New Year's, or do we carry on, what, do you know what I mean? Do we say, oh, it's still 2006, or do we go, oh, it's world, it's world new, or whatever, yeah. new world. That is definitely the first priority. You it's have. year one, right, we've sorted that out. Right, now... Well, it depends, doesn't it? Because a year might not be the same on this planet. We'd sort that out, right? We'd sort out what, what year it is and that. Well, no, no, um, no, no. What I'm saying is we, we'd have to start again anyway because the planet might not take one year as we know it to to go around the sun. It might not take a day to turn. A day is, is a day because that's how long it takes. For yeah, the... but we'd have to carry on, as we know, because we don't want to start doing longer days and that. Otherwise, it'll just kick off and say, this is rubbish, this new world, what are you doing? No, I'm we wouldn't a have a choice. Hour a day. We wouldn't have a choice. A day is how long it takes no. the planet to, but to, a day to is, turn, a day and is... a year is how long it takes that planet to go around no, the but, sun. But once. a day is man-made, really. There's places in the world where they're working in the dark, isn't they, in Iceland and that. But they don't go, well, it's dark all the time, so I'll stay in bed. Uh... Well, no, but there's still a day. It's still 24 hours in a day in Iceland. Yeah, but that's, we only work by that clock because that's what people use at the moment when they go, what time is it? You go, it's 20 past No, no, no. We use that, that because that's how long it takes the planet we're on to... to, to I, I've turn... never worried about it like that. I've just always... Well, no, I'm telling you... Well, that's because get... you weren't asked to get involved when they came up with the idea. I'm telling you, just... that's what a day is. It's yeah. how long it takes your planet to... to... Yeah. What would you mean? The way that, what... No, I'm, I'm just saying that's fine and everything. But if when I was born, people said, there's 26 hours in a day, I'd go, fair enough. I'm not going to argue. I'm well, not yeah, gonna, we could have I'm made that by long an hour, is yeah. We and, could have made hours shorter and get 26. Well, in. they're saying they're going to do that. Because, well, no, because, they're not. No, they are, because no, there's not. so many people in the world. Yeah. This is what I was talking about before. They've got to create more jobs. The only way to have more jobs, keep shops open, take on more people, everyone's happy. That makes no sense at all. <laughs> right. Save these 28 hours in a day. Yeah, it'd still be 24 hours long as we used to know it. No, you'd have, you'd have like, oh, what time is it? Oh, it's, it's like 20 past... Uh, 25 or whatever. <laughs> well, you're not, you're not <laughs> making any sense at all. No, I'm just saying. The Earth would still take 24 hours as we know it now. It, forget it. <laughs> <laughs> Hang on a minute. I want. Uh, there's more interesting territory here. Let's say we've got to our new planet, wherever that is. It takes 14 hours. Okay, to, you know, to, to do its turn. So we call that a day, All right? So we've now yeah. agreed that 14 hours is a day. But nothing, it's going to take ages to get the town centre built and that. If people are, if you've only got... I'm going with you, I'm defending you here! All right. Yeah. So we've got, so we've got that. We've established what the day is, we've established what a year is, right? It's year one, it's Carl year one. What next, all right? We've got all the people, we've moved to another planet. You said you had a bunch of other questions. Don't forget, our sleep patterns have evolved on a day. The reason we sort of like go to sleep at night and have about eight to ten hours sleep is because that's our evolution. No, but that's only yeah, that's just because what that's what we've got used to, isn't it? Yeah. You look at a sloth, that's asleep all the time. Yeah, that's got the same watch as us. It's doing yeah, what it but wants. It evolved differently, didn't it? it yeah, evolved but, but, on it's, the, but it's on... living now in two thousand six, so wake it up. Right, you can't get away. <laughs> You're not getting away with this anymore. If you want to live now, join in with us. Well, it's that time again. Uh it's the feature that the world is saying could rival monkey news one day. Ready? Oh, what's he written today? <laughs> well, Carl's diary. You didn't ex yeah. explain what it was, Carl's diary. Actually, as some one person said, if we are going to get it published, we could maybe publish it as the diary of an idiot. Very good. So, um, you know, a little riff there on one of the most famous diaries. Sunday, got up, 
Sunny day, so I went for a walk in the park. There was a bloke walking down the street who was whistling uh, some kind of annoying tune. He seemed quite happy with himself. Do people only whistle when they're happy? I don't whistle very much. It's a good point. I I'm whistling is so inane to me. But yeah, be, be, it's sort of like going, I'm, I'm, I'm content, I'm... Uh, it, it really is that thing that if they go, uh, you go, well, um, Mr. Mellows, I'm afraid uh, I've got some bad news. Not only has your wife died, but you've lost the house. Thanks, Doctor. Won't happen. No, <laughs> you don't whistle it, yeah. when you're sad. The other place you hear, of course, is uh, changing rooms. And that's men going, I'm whistling so I'm not looking at your cock. <laughs> How could I be? I'm concentrating on whistling. <laughs> <laughs> the lake was frozen over where I was walking. The ducks looked worried. They were sat on the edge of the lake, waiting for it to melt. Where are they, Carl? Yeah, we're just sat there, looking, sort of going, oh, what's going on? <laughs> I don't know, I, how, how long is a duck's memory? Because I wondered whether they're going, this doesn't seem right, but I don't know why. I asked Suzanne, <laughs> why ducks don't use their wings much? They seem to walk and swim more and don't bother using their wings. Suzanne said she had to call her mum and dad, so I never got an answer. <laughs> The old excuse! Yeah, yeah. <laughs> Suzanne, oh, I can't talk now, Carl. Um, Gonna I've... phone my mum. Mm. There was a marathon type run going on in the park. It reminded me of the time when we were moving flat. It was the day of the London Marathon. Me and Suzanne were walking down the middle of the road taking some stuff to our new flat. I was carrying a lamp and a kitchen bin. People were clapping me, thinking I was doing some kind of fun run. <laughs> uh, Why were you walking on the same route? Because I, well, it was when we lived on the Docklands. Oh, and, uh, brilliant. There was, there was no other route. The flat was just about 100 oh. yards down the road. They're going, look at the bloke with the bald wig. <laughs> He's yeah. carrying a lamp and a bin. Took a bag of old clothes to Oxfam. It was just old t-shirts and a couple of jumpers with holes in it. I don't think anyone will buy them. But the Oxfam is closer to the flat than the wheelie bin is. <laughs> Oh, shit, man, that is only gone and written it down. The jingle there to announce a yet another reading from Carl Pilkington's diary. Um, when are you going to write until, Carl? What have you got you going to do? I've got to do As far as December and then that's it? Uh, I don't know, when does the diary end? 31st of December, usually. Yeah. Do it the whole typical, way always the same. <laughs> yeah, that's, that's when I'll do it till, and then, uh... Why do that? Why just, why be conformist? Why... Why end on December? Why not end on January the 31st? Weird that you should go... Don't be constrained to what the diary Please. says. Me ma'am called me to ask me to like... Fuck me, you're right. That like, look, that should be. Me ma'am called me to ask me to look in some of the magazine shops in London for a magazine that she can't find. It's called UFO Data. <laughs> <laughs> I said, I ain't heard of it. I think I did some work for her, did some editing. For her, to sort of show off my skills and that. <laughs> sure. And she was like, oh, you're good at this, aren't you? I was like, yeah. And I think she got us another drink, because I was, I was doing that editing for her, in my own time. So you're up. You're up on the deal, aren't you? Because I, I know now, I know for a fact, that you've not spent any money on her in 11 years, so you are, you're 40p up. <laughs> at least. <laughs> Lawrence from New York says, I was wondering how Mr. K. Dilkington would interpret this famous saying of philosopher Ludwig Wittgenstein. The quote is, if a lion could talk, we could not understand him. Even if he's English? Yeah, if he... <laughs> yeah, if a lion could speak English, so there's no language barrier, he's speaking English words and using all the correct uh, grammar and everything, but you wouldn't be able to understand what he was saying. Why? Because it is from a different world his frames of reference would be so bizarre that you wouldn't be able to get a grasp on what he was talking about because you'd have so little in common even if he used real words no but he's talking english yeah no but his reference points would be just so far removed you know they're removed slightly when uh, uh if you saw two people talking about kierkegaard you don't you'd you'd i hear... wouldn't understand that exactly so remove that a billion times to a different species with different input. No, but it depends. If I'm talking to a lion in London Zoo, yeah, he'll he'll be saying, oh, "I'm fed up with being stuck in here." I'll go, yeah. 
It's like that. It depends what his background <laughs> is. I mean, there's some people who might have lived down the road from me, but have a totally different life. Absolutely. So it doesn't matter that it's a lion, does it? Well, yeah, because they're just trying to remove it even more. So, so now it's not just a bloke who lived a few doors away. Now it's not even a bloke. Now it's not even. Yeah, but I'd I'd pick something smaller yeah. or right. or something you know a worm without a mouth. I'd go definitely not. What? Definitely, Definitely not, not what? what? I wouldn't be having a chat with it. I just, I just think that a worm that's that's on the ground. Yeah. What's it got to offer me? <laughs> it's, it's blind and it hasn't got a mouth. It's not going to be a good day out with it. Is what I'm saying. It's not going to have that much to say to me, even if it's English. Right? <laughs> even if it's. And English. how can you tell if a worm is English? Is it wear a very tiny bowler hat? Oh Christ! But do you understand? What about a jellyfish? No, I, you see, I think that's where you, you can you can say you wouldn't be able to have a good chat with them because to me, the sea might as well be another world. Yeah. Right. Yeah. Um, in a way, I, I think the fish sort of have more rights than us. What do you mean? Just because when when whoever made the world, right, yeah. say you know we we're just bigging up God, but if yeah. I was was to have a go at him, yeah, I'd say you added too much water. <laughs> Criticism one to God, right? right. So, <laughs> you, how would you have changed that? Just, just more land. Fair enough. Now, why, why, are the, why have fish got more rights than us? That because, was what I was because, interested. because there's loads of them, and when you look at the amount of sea on the world, right? There's, there's loads of that. You only have to like, like you know, I was in Malaga the other week, right? And, you know, you look in the sea. There's loads of different fish. Uh, and that's just in like eight foot water. If you go miles out, there's like all sorts of weird fish, isn't there, with like lights on them and everything. So, and they're just millions of different types. Yeah. Yeah. Now. <laughs> but why does that mean they've got more rights than us? Just because I think, wh you know, rights come in in numbers, don't they? If you know what I mean. Like, if there's one of you shouting, people go, oh, he's an idiot, shut up, whatever. If there's loads of you shouting, they go, oh, best listen to them, see what they've got to say. Right. And, and that's what I mean about fish. <laughs> yeah. There's loads of fish. Right. So... But they're not really making their voices heard, though, are they, Carl? Yeah. I know, because they're underwater. But what, but what I mean is, I don't know what I mean. <laughs> <laughs> Carl, right? What what do you think it's like being a crab? If you if you could go now your mind into a crab, what would you see? Where would you be? What would you be doing? What would you be thinking? What do you think of all the other things? The crabs you'd see, the 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 squids you'd see. What what what's it like? Do you think? I want you to. It's like creative writing. Just think. Just let yourself go. Come on. Uh, it's got to be a crab. What do you think of a slug? What do you think to be a slug? What would you do if you were, if you were transported now into a slug? What would you do? And you and Suzanne, you're suddenly in the kitchen, but you're a slug. And Suzanne's sort of like there, just making tea and that. How do you let her know I'd, it's you? It's impossible. I'd just chuck myself into the salt pot. Or <laughs> no, because what what do you do? I'd I'd hate that. I'd hate, that would be horrible. That. <laughs> oh God. Have you ever read uh, Franz Kafka's Metamorphosis, no, in which a man so. wakes up and he's turned into a giant beetle? And that's the yeah, that's the whole story. Uh, I think it might be of interest to you. So what happened to him with a beetle? Well, I don't want to ruin it for you in case you no, read I it. I won't but be reading it. Don't worry. He joined a pop group with three other people. He was brilliant. No, it's a really wonderful book. It's a kind of almost heartbreaking because, of course, he uh, he does like Ricky saying. He finds it very hard then to relate to other people, even though he still has the consciousness of a human. You know, his parents, his rest of his family, they don't know how to deal with him. You know, because he, he's a giant beetle, he becomes a freak. He becomes an outsider. It's terrible, you but, know. But hang on, though. Is he a giant beetle? Or yeah. Is he... Well, yeah, well, that's not going to go down well, is it? <laughs> that's That course, people aren't going to like you. But if it's a normal-sized one, then you just get in with the other beetles, don't you? <laughs> Whereas if you're but a giant... Sort of how would you do that? How would you ingratiate yourself? Right, so you're suddenly a beetle. You're Carl Pilkington, right? There's other people. They're doing their business. They're scuttling around... <laughs> And you go, and you go in there, and you go, and they go, they look at you as a new beetle. What, what's your first? What do you do? How do you ingratiate yourself? Well, for a bit, I wouldn't, I wouldn't sort of barge in, 
into their house and that. I'd I'd wait until they're out and about, and I'd I'd like like in life, right? Um, sort of help them out. I don't know what Beatles do all day. I've never seen one doing anything. They just seem to be going from one place to another. Right. I've never seen them carrying anything. I don't know what they eat. I don't know what they do. <laughs> I don't know how we've got them, right? But what I mean is, I'd watch them and I'd sort of help them out. And I mean, you know, it's like going on a date or meeting a woman, isn't it? But what if you there is? Whoa, a hang on. What do you mean? What, what, how is it like going on a date with a woman? Well, it's like I said about Suzanne with her hot chocolate. She bought me that, and I've gone. She's all right. Right. right? She gets me another one before I know it. She's living with me. So, it's you. Treat- so you're, you're, you're all these those Beatles. They're scrubbing around, right? You're sort of like watching them, and there's and then you realise that you want a mate with this female Beetle. What do you do? What's your first move? Yeah, but I don't know what Beatles do, do I? So I don't know how, how what you do. I don't know if you go up and go. Right, and what do they do? How do they get on? Whoa! It's a different world. I, I don't know yet, do I? Because they haven't done it. Would but, you feel bad because having your own mind in this beetle, right? Would you feel bad shagging a beetle? Would you feel that that was that was a bit sick because you've got a human mind? Well, no, because you just close your eyes and that, wouldn't you? And go oh, pretend to think of something else. So get round it that way. There's no point getting down about it because I'm stuck now as a beetle. So you've got to <laughs> get on with it. <laughs> but if you're a slug, you said you'd throw yourself in the salt pot. What do you do if you're a beetle if you got depressed? And you see all the other humans. No, you see your mates, right? They got they're listening to the iPod. What would you do? But no, that's what I'm saying. Though beetles are different because they mm-hmm. do tend to hang about with each other. A slug's always on its own. <laughs> it's a lonely insect, isn't it? <laughs> It's not an insect. Alright, what is it? A mollusk. Right, they're lonely. I've never seen a load of snails all together or slugs wandering about. Those beetles seem to knock about in crowds. <laughs> yeah. So, yeah. oh god, okay, right, another one. So they're a sociable creatures and it wouldn't bother you that, you're, that you've got the mind of Carl Pilkington in there? Because you uh, can't communicate with these people. Because they don't like, speak English. They don't. They don't have any communication with you. Yeah, but if it's happened to me, there'll be another one in there. Okay then. Right. Okay. Um, what would you do, right? It, <laughs> that's the most disgusting thing. What could it be? Um, right. What What would you do, right? If you were suddenly a fly, right, and you were knocking around with the flies, right, and you had to land on some uh, excrement? Yeah. What would you do? Yeah, but I don't have to. What do you mean? You're a fly. You're yeah, but I it. wouldn't. No, I wouldn't be loving it, though, would I? Why? Because of me and that fly's head. <laughs> so I'd, I'd just, I don't think other flies would be going, come on, join in. I'd just be like, no, I'll, I'll wait here. Yeah, wait, watch and that. Because don't, I don't see why they have to do that. What would you do right, if you had to go back and you were in a, um, you were, had to go and put your mind in like the, um, an unhatched uh, egg? Of something like maybe one of those e- like uh, that a wasp was injected with a spider. So you know you're in an egg, right? Which is really uncomfortable. In a spider, how would you feel about that, Carl? You're a baby wasp in the abdomen of a spider. And I know everything that I know now. I'm I'm sat in there. Yeah. And now I'm now I'm in a spider. As a ba- as an unborn wasp, what the f- am I doing here? What's going on? I don't know what I'll do there. Uh, will they try and sleep? <laughs> There's nothing else to do, though, is there? I just pray to God it never happens. I don't believe it. He's written it down. The f- well, that's the jingle that signals it's time for more extracts from Carl's diary and uh, we'll lunge straight into it wandered down carnery street there was a happy homeless fella i gave him one pound fifty i thought of a tongue twister after giving him the money it goes if you can't treat a cheerful tramp what sort of tramp can you treat it's good that all Say right it fast if you can't treat a cheerful tramp what sort of tramp can you treat yeah. good isn't it good that yeah you've got too much time on your hands Carl. <laughs> Learned some famous quotes to see if they are as good as my sayings. Number one, treat every day as if it's your last. Very famous saying. Now, is that something you do, Carl? Um, but you know, me, me problem with that one is that if it was your last, you wouldn't want to be doing much. That's that's the only problem I've got with that. I wouldn't want to 
you know, go to a fairground or whatever because you're going, oh, it's my last day, what am I going to do? And I think you'd spend so much time worrying about what you're going to do that you'd end up staying in. I think you're right. Um, you've taken some of the poetry out of it. I think it means live life to the fullest. Right? I like the fact that you were musing on the idea that if it was your last day, you'd go to the fair. <laughs> <laughs> it's getting such a 19th century way of spending your final day. I know, yeah. yeah. Um, well, the thing is, the, the other thing is that, um, the only thing that people get depressed about in terms of sort of like, um, you know, life and death is, uh, not the knowledge that they're gonna die, but more the knowledge that they know they're gonna die when they're dying. If someone told you, um, no one ever knows when they're gonna die, no one ever gets an illness, no one ever gets hit by a truck, everyone passes away peacefully in their sleep, dreaming they're riding a big marshmallow, right? Then you wouldn't care about anything. It wouldn't matter when, it wouldn't matter if you died tomorrow or in 30 years time. You'd just live life to the full. You'd come, you'd, you'd have it, every day would be great. You'd go out, you'd come back, you'd fall asleep. That would be amazing. There'd be no stress. There'd be no, there'd be no angsty, oh, we're all gonna die stress. Cause it wouldn't matter. Cause it would just be your life. Wouldn't it be amazing if someone guaranteed you, Carl, you're gonna die in your sleep? I'm not gonna tell you when. Yeah, but you'd... some people do, don't they? Well, exactly. Yeah, but we never know we're going to, cause we, we stress. What if we get a dreadful illness? What if we, you know... But, know. but we're almost not letting people die naturally anymore, are we? Because we're always bodging stuff up. What do you mean? Well, someone who might naturally die in the sleep aren't allowed to naturally die in the sleep because they wake them up with those electric things and get them going again and pop in a new lung or whatever whilst they're at it. That's what I'm saying. They don't just... You never hear it anymore, do you? Frank peacefully died in his sleep. No, he died on the operating table whilst we were putting in a new lung. They never... They don't die naturally anymore. <laughs> Frank died peacefully with 40,000 volts going through them and a couple of people going, Clear! <laughs> Clear! <laughs> Rushing about today. Got to get a lot done as I'm flying to Malaga tomorrow to see my mum and dad. Don't like flying. I'd be happy if they give you a parachute instead of a life jacket. They say Da Vinci invented the parachute as well as the helicopter. He never got round to making them though because he only drew them on some paper. Got up at 5am as I had to get to Heathrow to get on the plane to see mum and dad in Malaga. Went out for a drink with a cousin who lives in Spain. Ain't seen her for 27 years. Oh that must have been tricky making conversation. I didn't really bother. Because <laughs> where do you start? I might no, as well so go up to anyone in the street and start having a chat. <laughs> yeah, you have to go further back than, uh, did you want Chantal to win Big Brother? <laughs> yeah. Me dad and me talked about history. I said we shouldn't go on about things that happened ages ago because I bet something similar has happened more recently. Brilliant. <laughs> Read about an island in the Indian Ocean where there are tribesmen still living like they're cavemen. A helicopter tried to land and the tribesmen chucked spears at them. This is what I meant about not having to talk about things that happened ages ago. We have got new cavemen now, so why do we talk about the old ones? People could have lived before, but computers and all that blew up and books got burnt, so all they had left was what these tribesmen have got left. Ramblings <laughs> of, of a, a ramblings man. Of a maniac. That I mean, that's a... just a few hours before you go crazy with a gun in there. No, but what, what I mean there is, right... Mm. Say if all this has happened before, right? Podcasting's been happening years ago. Mm. Something happens. Again, right? lot of your information from the Planet of the Apes. <laughs> Something happens. World ends, mm. right? We come back again somehow. Yeah. It's the detail <laughs> it's you leave yeah. out that makes yeah. you intriguing. Just like the watch that you can wear that uh, tells you when you're going to die. How does it work? Pop it on your wrist. That's yeah. all the detail you need. So, the world happened, no. we came back, we... Uh, yeah. Have you seen the pictures? <laughs> Forget it, then, if you don't get it. It's interesting that you had all those profound thoughts about this, this period in the past <laughs> when they all lived, but you still, you still found it uh, appropriate to include at the end of that. It says the tribesmen wave their knobs about when they've had enough of having visitors. That's what's what he said in the paper, that's what happens. They're quite happy. What paper is this that you're reading? It was it was in it was in like a paper a couple of days ago. It said um, they don't mind having visitors if they're bringing them coconuts and stuff that they can eat. Once they've got everything they need, 
you start waving the tackle about, and that means like, right, leave now. Which you would, wouldn't you? <laughs> yeah, at a dinner party. Uh, my grandfather used to do that. <laughs> <laughs> well now, well now, well now. What have we here? I'm here to tell you all about Friday Night Comedy on Channel 4. <laughs> There's three great comedies. Green Wing, It's Nearly Ready, My Name is Earl, and The It Crowd. <laughs> the great new comedy from the creator of Father Ted. And what have we here? Jingle, jangle, jingle, jangle as it happens. Friday Night Comedy, this Friday on Channel 4. Switch it on. Now then, well now, young man. Uh. Well now, now then, well now, now then, young man. Oh, get back to that, monkey muse! You freaking kill Ah, that jingle is getting more annoyed by the week. Well, this is the final monkey news, right? I'm not I'm not doing this anymore. Right? Because we've, we've covered it all. All the monkey news has been covered? It has. It has. We've done, we've done loads of them. I think all the news... That needs to be sort of known as being told, right? Um, that is the end of the news. Jesus Christ. <laughs> what? Get on with it. Right, do you know, um, in the first uh, podcast that we did, we uh, chatted about the monkey that went into space and stuff. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So where we left So haven't you got a real no a new monkey news? Well, it's an update, isn't it? I mean, is it new? Has no, it happened recent? Has it happened since podcast one? I have to pick Ricky up on the point that he thinks any of the monkey news we've heard <laughs> a happened and b <laughs> happened recently. It almost always happened in olden times or ages ago. Uh, oh, you're right. It never happened. <laughs> right. Anyway, so like I say, the first monkey news. It was about this monkey that went into space. This was the one that was fed by bananas that came out of a little shoot on the spacecraft. Yeah, it went. It went up there. Uh, did a really good job. It was taught how to press the buttons, hit the left button for a banana, you know. Right button to, to go right and make history and go, go into right space. Right, um. Ooh, what do I want? Not more banana. You haven't taken off yet? Ah, yeah, more banana. Oh, we shouldn't have given him a choice of banana or a change history. We should have the right button. We should have fed him before he went and then he had a right button. He's at the left button again. He's just eating bananas up there. What's going on? It's costing us a fortune. <laughs> Press the right button and do something. Oh, the left button and go in the little. So anyway, yeah, I told you, he went up there, he came back, he could never get that the high, high exactly, again. Yeah. You mm. know what I mean? He tried other things. I think he tried to get a band together and that. <laughs> <laughs> right. Yeah. So anyway, there was there was loads of monkeys that were signed up to this NASA program, and it was 1961 when this little monkey called Ham, that was his name. So mm. a bit of an update. That's that's the same one as I talked about. His right. name was Am. As well as him, there was one called Enos. He he went round the world loads of times. So anyway, what I found out about it since then, um, Am went up there, did the left right business with the bananas. Enos, um, they didn't put as much work into the trip when when he went up there, and something went wrong with the machinery. And. Do you know how you get a banana for the left button and all that? Mm. It's official it now. <laughs> There's <laughs> yeah. two buttons in this spaceship. Banana dispenser and everything else. The right <laughs> button is everything else. <laughs> but but it worked the other way. The machinery went weird. Oh no, really? So so it meant that the right button would give him a banana. Right. The left button did everything else. Oh no. How did so that, what, that so what had been though? taught I'm, what oh, this is the problem with, with electronics, isn't it? Well, no, I don't think no, this, <laughs> this, this is the problem. But the good th I mean, honestly, look it up if you want. This is all online, by So way. what mm. happened when it all went haywire? What what occurred? Well, look, Carl, Carl, this is online, and it's bollocks. Luckily, um, Enos, because he'd, he'd, he'd done a few trips. <laughs> right, you've so experienced. So he was right, well, I know this isn't right. <laughs> as much as I love bananas, <laughs> this isn't right. <laughs> so, that was his thinking, of course it was. So anyway, so he came back, they, they were all like over the moon with him. He said, I can't work with these conditions. Good mission and everything, well done and working it out. He sorted all that out. Um, it moved on a few years, Armstrong's gone up there, Buzz and that other fella. They've been up there, the, the monkeys aren't needed anymore. Mm. But they were like, we've got all these monkeys who have done NASA training. Mm. <laughs> what are we going to do with them all? Mm. <laughs> And they had mm. to raise fourteen million pounds mm. to make them like a, a like an old sort of chimp home for retired 
<laughs> retired NASA trained monkeys. Chimpanots. Chimpanots. Something they've got in there is like a little museum, right, of all the missions and that that they've been on. So they can sort of, even though they're not going to be going into space again, they can almost relive it and reminisce mm -hmm. of the times that they've had. And they're reminiscing with each other, are they? Just, just sort of going, oh, remember that times. time when it all went wrong, the button became the left when it should yeah. have been the right and all the rest of yeah. it. They're just, you know, sort talking of about old times, talking yeah. about old times and what have you, like old people like to do. Yeah, sure. Um, and yeah, that's it. So if you want to, like, give give some money to towards their home, right. you can go to, like, savethechimps.org. And it's all there, all that, all that information that I've given you. It's all there, you can... I'd be surprised out. if all the information you've given us is there. It's all there. I'd be very surprised. It's all there, just retired, you know, monkeys and that, who have done the bit. Perhaps we should retire monkey news to that same space. That's what I mean, so, you know, I hope you've enjoyed the monkey news and that, that was the, the last one. Look after the monkeys, uh, do your bit, because they've done their bit, uh, that's it, yeah. But just because I'm not giving the news, look it up, do you know what I mean, it's all out there. Don't be ignorant. <laughs> Wise words. Carl needs your money. I, if you could see what I see now, he's just looking at me with this. He just, he just needs stuff, don't you, Carl? What do you need? What do you need? Just something more than nothing. <laughs> <laughs> for information on the archive of the podcast, these last 12 shows, and for the new podcast to come, go to rickygervais.com. You can register there. We'll send out loads of information. Uh, plus, you'll just find out links to, uh, to how to get all these, uh, all this stuff that we're, that we're offering out there. There's also a free taster if you just can't wait for more of Carl's nonsense. Make sure, please, that you register uh, your email and everything so we can get in touch and just tell you what's going to happen uh, with the Ricky Gervais show, with Carl's mind, and with everything else. rickygervais.com. Go there. Makes perfect sense. Uh, it's, the, it's the end of an era, but the start of a new one. It's almost seamless, in a way, isn't it? The end and the beginning. But, Carl, what do you think about that? How things end and new things begin? Um, well, I suppose you've got to have an end for a beginning, so it's just a bit odd that we've got an end and having a beginning. But that's science for you. <laughs> <laughs> Hello, and welcome back to the first in the third series of the Ricky Gervais Show, with me, Ricky Gervais, Stephen Merchant... Hello there. ...and the fool, the round-headed buffoon that is Carl Pilkington. All right. We've been away filming um, our second series of extras, uh, leaving Carl to his own devices in a sweltering London. We've had a heat wave here in the capital city, haven't we, Carl? It's been all right. It's been up to 100 degrees, record-breaking temperatures. Yeah. What have you been doing, though? Uh, sort of enjoyed it a little bit. Was out and about. Yeah. Getting to see the place, having loads of walks. And that, I like to have walks. You know, watching what <laughs> like people Like a dog. Are doing. <laughs> yeah! When, when he jumps off the couch and <laughs> starts exactly. scratching against the door... <laughs> Suzanne thinks it's time. <laughs> it's, a walk. it's just good thinking time, though, isn't it? Uh, as well, having a walk. You've got no other clutter going on around you. Right. And you just think about a lot of stuff. And, you know, like, like say, with the weather being hot and stuff, a lot of insects knocking about. Right. So I've just been watching them. <laughs> so, so while we've been filming a TV show, you've been watching insects? Yeah, just seeing, because everybody knows insects are out there, but no one's keeping an eye on them. <laughs> Why, <laughs> what are they up to? What are you worried <laughs> about? Well, Steve, you won't be laughing like that if you'd, if you'd watch them, because they do some weird stuff and that, yeah. is what I mean. What yeah. sort of stuff? Any examples? Uh, I saw a bee have a heart attack. <laughs> <laughs> you saw a bee have a heart attack? Yeah. How were you sure it was a heart attack? Because what happened, I'd, I'd been... Did it clutch its chest with all six legs? No, I'd Were there some other little bee paramedics? No, no, I'd, I'd just been out in the park anyway, just looking at, you know, uh, caterpillars knocking about. Uh, butterflies and stuff, so I was sort of up there. <laughs> so when Suzanne goes to work, she goes, Carl, don't you waste the day. Just because you don't work at the radio station anymore, I want you to do some constructive stuff. And you go, yeah, I am, yeah. And so you, so in your head suddenly goes... <laughs> and he goes, he goes out, oh, there's a moth. <laughs> but, but the thing is, so I'd been in the park and I was aware of the insects that are around us more than like most of the time. And I come out of the park 
just crossing like a, a sort of a busy road and what have you. And I saw this bee to the right of me, sort of in the air. And it was a big one, and I was a bit like, oh, let's watch that. And um, he just fell. It fell from the air in front of me, and it was it, on the pavement, and I thought, oh, what's going on here? And I, I, I looked at it for a bit, and it was really still, gave it a little kick, just to see if there was any movement, nothing. Stone, sort of, what's the saying? Stone cold dead. <laughs> yeah! Stone cold be dead. So, yeah. uh, that, that I was... like the fact that this bee suddenly saw Carl and had a heart attack. Yeah. It'd never seen anything that round before. Yeah. It just thought, it, it had approached him because he thought it was a sunflower. My right. God, it's a giant walking orange. Every dream has come true. <laughs> oh! No, but it just summed up life for me. I thought, that, that's, that's like us, isn't it, at the end of the day? They have heart attacks. Stress. <laughs> you put it down to stress, do you? Well, it's in London, isn't it? You know, everything has stresses from living here. And they are bald, aren't they? They've got fur all over, but they lose the... And always overweight. <laughs> <laughs> it was a fat, bald bee! Oh. So what did you, it fell to the floor and you, you instantly, you just kicked it, you didn't attempt no, to revive it? No, I waited a second it. and just looked at it to see if there was any, you know, leg movement or wing, and there was nothing, <laughs> and then when I sort of kicked it, it was sort of hard, it had hardened already, it was just... Rigor mortis had set in. Set in. Did it put you in a bad mood for the day? Because I know things like that can just send you over the edge for the day. Uh, death and that does a bit, Suzanne doesn't like me talking about death. What riveting conversations do you come up with? No, just things like, uh, one of our mates has had a baby recently, and I just was saying, oh, when that's sort of our age, we'll nearly be dead. Think of that. That's the first thing he says, there's a new life brought into the world. <laughs> but when he's our age, we'll be dead. Yeah. No, Maybe weird. they'll let you do the speech at the christening. Yeah, it's just, you know, so like I say, just, just insect life and that, it's interesting. You say it's interesting, but do you care about really finding out about them? Do you really care about what bees do or as do? You look at them and you make up your own world. For example, it had a heart attack, it's stress, it's overweight. You know nothing. I, c I could probably, why don't, you, why don't you look something up? You know, honeybees are fascinating. You know, uh, honeybees, they've been, they've been around making honey for a hundred million years. That's incredible. Their wings beat over 11,000 times a minute. And he's thinking, no wonder I had a heart attack. <laughs> yeah, exactly. But they're fat. Do you know, do you know um, bees, like ants, are actually like specialised wasps? They're sort, of, they're sort of developed from the same... Family. Huh? Family, like. Well, yeah. Yeah. Doesn't surprise me. Doesn't surprise you, though. Does it interest you in any way? Um, well, everything's linked to something, isn't it? It's like how they say we're from monkeys and that. Yeah. It's all the same sort of thing. Yeah. Well, yeah, I've been watching loads of stuff. I've been watching ants. You mentioned ants. <laughs> uh, I've had a lot of moths in the house. They're sort of sad. I mean, you, you say it like it was a out. garden party. <laughs> no, yeah. it's, just, it's just all these things. You, you look at them. I mean, you, you go into the scientific bit saying, you know, it likes honey or whatever. Uh, it doesn't like honey. That, the reason they store honey is to get them through the winter when there's not, like, nectar, or nectar's hard to get and they store it. And they store too much, which is why we can skim a little bit off the top. We're like agents. <laughs> yeah, well, but, but all I'm saying is I look at more about what its life is like. As well, no, you to... don't. You don't. You guess. You make it up. You don't look into it at all. No, but you can. A bit of guesswork is you, you're pretty close to the truth most of the time. Why? Well, what do you mean? Well, I don't, I, that, that statement sums you up. A bit of guesswork is pretty close to the truth. Because if you watch something long enough, is what I'm saying, you can see that it's it's a bit clueless. It's the same way about ants. Or you know, they're hard workers and all that. I watch one. It's going back and forth all the time. They go one way and then they stop and go the other way. They try to look busy in front of the mates. But if you watch one. <laughs> If you watch one long enough, it's back and forwards, and it's like he's done nothing there. I'm going to carry this twig back and forth until I can knock off it for. There's a lot of that going on. Is there? Because uh, there's not. There's none of that going on. There is. <laughs> no, like I say, the moth. Depressing little sort of thing. <laughs> Why is it depressing? Just just the way it hasn't got, it hasn't got eyes, does it? You just look at it, you don't know what's going on, I just don't th I think if you haven't got eyes, you shouldn't have wings. <laughs> 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 <laughs>
That's a rule. If we could put that into practice, please. <laughs> That's a great rule. That's a fantastic rule, isn't it? Yeah. You haven't got eyes. You should not believe. Certainly true of people thinking of becoming an air pilot. <laughs> you know, whilst you've been working on that, I've been travelling about a bit, just seeing, seeing the country and that. Mm. Went to um, Dorset. Right, a uh, nice beach there, uh, and you know those huts you get, like a hut on the beach, and you oh, where you get changed, you can get changed in it. But they they better than that. It's like you can put a telly in it, uh, sofa if you want. Oh, you don't mean the Victorian changing? Yeah, yeah. You mean those like sort of things? It, it's sort of bigger than that. Yeah. And um, we we're walking down there, and there was a really sort of big fat family, in one of them. There was about four of them, and you could tell that they've never had a game of anything, do you know what I mean? They yeah. just sit down there, eating ice cream, looking at the sea and what have you. And the weird thing is, the little fat kid, the youngest one, who must have been, I don't know, about eight, he was really fat, to the point of, you couldn't see his neck. Yeah. And he sat, he sat at the front of his mum and dad and his older sister. He sat there, and he had a frisbee, and I thought, look, they, they don't want to play with him. I mean, that's, that's an active game to play, isn't it? Yeah. A frisbee. As we got closer... It was just using it to eat Maltesers out of. <laughs> <laughs> I just thought, even again, you know, the one active thing he's got is using it to eat out of. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> extraordinary. And that just sums up what people are like you know, when it comes to keeping oh. fit and activities. Oh, that's fantastic. Were you sporty, Rick? Uh, I was, yeah. I loved it. I absolutely loved it. Were you good at it? Um, I was good at some things. I uh, was never good at rugby. Never good at cricket. Uh, was all right at football, but those things were the more competitive things that were scary. So at my school, when you're surrounded by like people, <laughs> the fun is hurting someone. Well, it's weird you say it because I remember the first day I went to play cricket. My mum said, as I was leaving, I was really excited about playing cricket. She went, "Be careful!" I was walking across a playing field once. A cricket ball hit me on the head. I was unconscious for two hours. Freaked me out on yeah, the well, way to play cricket. I thought, okay, always tit scared of the ball because it's obviously, as you say, rock solid. I remember a couple of seasons later, I had to play rugby for the first time. As I was leaving there, she went, be careful with rugby. I knew a kid once broke his back playing it. I was terrified of rugby. I mean, I was yeah, terrified scared, of rugby. Such a scary game. The ball came to me, I got rid of it immediately. It's uh, mental. Uh, uh, yeah. I don't understand. What, if, what I remember is, I remember a teacher saying you've got to play it very carefully because you can get seriously injured, you can hurt yourself, you can be crippled for life. And I remember thinking, why are we allowed to still play this game at school? I was worried about cracking heads yeah. and a finger in the eye. How is it not bad? That worried me all the time, a finger in the eye. Like, uh, but they removed the asbestos from schools in the 60s and 70s. Yeah. But rugby is allowed to play. It's mental. Yeah. You see, I, I had a mate called Mark who liked playing cricket, right? And when I, when I used to say to my mum, oh, can I, I'm just want to go out with Mark and his dad to play cricket, and she never used to let me go. She'd go, oh, I'd prefer, you know, you didn't. And I used to always think that, you know, it's, it's because it's a dangerous sport, you can get it on the head by the ball, and it's hard, put an eye out or whatever. But it was because his dad, his dad used to drive us to the place to play cricket, and he had, um, his eyelids were too big. So... <laughs> He, he, he used to have to sort of have his head right back. <laughs> Look, it's like so, one of those old-fashioned dolls. Right, where you could yeah, lean yeah, yeah, yeah. And they <laughs> clunk back yeah. and clunk forward again. And she didn't, uh, she didn't like me getting in a car with him. Sorry, and is this, his eyelids are too big. You, so, growing up, you had a woman who had her head like a bag of spuds. You yeah, had, I didn't know her. No, you had two kids at school with webbed hands and feet and big heads. Yeah. You had a pigeon chest boy. Nowadays you're walking around with insects and moths like something from James and the Giant Peach. Yeah, and you had a, a bloke whose eyelids were too big. One thing I've, I've noticed, because I occasionally go to the gym, and you know those guys who work out constantly to give themselves extraordinary physiques? Just that, you know, they're on the trip, they're on the weights, and they're really... And I've noticed in the summer particularly, those guys cannot wait to get their shirts off. Yeah. Everywhere you see, they're walking around. If they've got a good good torso, they are walking shirts off. Even, I think, if you go to nightclubs, I notice there's always one guy who's thinking, well, I have put so much work into this body, I have got to get my shirt off on the dance floor. A vest, yeah. You know, and it comes straight a, off. A brand new tattoo. I'm not covering that up. Exactly. I've paid a lot for it. Let's see it. Yeah, yeah. But that's what we were saying about bodies. I can't remember why we were talking about it. We've got to a point in science now that you can change your head. 
Right. No, well, that, that doesn't make any sense at all. It, it was a program out on. It was done in the 50s or 60s where they stuck a, a monkey's brain on a stick and had it wired up and it still worked, right? Right, okay. And that was in like the 60s or. Right, whatever. okay. Well, so, to, well to, to say the change of head makes no sense at all. Because just, if you put a, a, a different head on a different body, you're changing the body. Yeah, I know. Well, that's what I'm about to say to you, though. What? That's what I'm saying. That I'd be more confident. If I had someone else's body, because if anyone dissed it, I can go, I oh, know, it's bad, isn't it? But it's what not are you mine. talking about? Well, it's, it's like, say, um... As opposed to someone else's head? Yeah. Well, well it wouldn't be me, would it? The head is me. Well, of course it is, that's yeah. what I mean. Yeah, so what do you mean? Me. You'd be happier having someone else's body. What, than your own? What I mean is, say if, um, you're wandering about, for some, for some reason, there's... An incident. You have to take your top off and that, and everyone's looking at you, right? And you're a bit sort of, you know, you haven't got the muscles and that, you haven't got the six pack. Right. Uh, which isn't that nice anyway. I don't know why that's become a nice thing, really, seeing the insides of you. You might as well. <laughs> I mean, I know not... I came up with the see through skin idea, but it's, it's a bit weird, isn't it? You can see stuff. No, no, it's the muscle in front of the. No, it's not. Sometimes it is. You can it's, see not the, like it's not the tubes. outline of your no, organs. No, you can't see tubes. You can see tubes and veins and stuff. Well, you can see veins. Yeah, well, I don't want to see that. That's why we've got skin over it. Is well, what stop I mean. looking at naked men, then. Well, no, you, but you sometimes could... you can't help it because it's been hot. And it's, like you say, there's people walking around with vests on and that. So anyway, what I'm saying is, say if some incident happened, I'm walking about with my top off. Right. Girls are laughing at me, right? Why? Don't know, they might. <laughs> yeah, go on. So they wouldn't look at your body, they'd all look at your head. So so what I mean is Yeah. Rewind that, right, and imagine yeah. all that happens again, but I've I've got someone else's body. Right. Whose right? body? Uh just some fella who's died and I, and my body was injured and they said, We've got a new body in. You right. can have it. We'll yeah. stick your head on it. Yes. Yeah. Now say if They're if, laughing at you. Uh, they're, they're laughing, laughing, at, the body, they're laughing yeah. at the body. Yeah. But at least I'd be able to sort of go, I oh, know it's a mess, but it's not mine. At least I don't have to claim ownership. <laughs> so, so all of this extraordinary technology that can make a head, put one head on another person's body, so you can go, yeah, it's not my body. Oh no. But, but it's not your own. I'm not being funny though. So if you have a body transplant, right, and you're there, you're at home, yeah. naked, you look down, yeah, lovely penis and a set of testicles. Yeah. Right. What do you do with them? What do you mean? What am I doing with them? Well, do you like them? Well, you wouldn't you wouldn't mess about with them as much as if they were your own. <laughs> <laughs> but if you did mess about with them, would you feel guilty that you were messing about with another man's testicles and penis? And it's the full body. Yeah. No, because th they're not my hands either. <laughs> <laughs> you're a genius! You're a fucking genius! So what you're doing is watching someone else wank. Yeah. <laughs> well, one thing Carl has been doing over the past few months is writing his diary. He's kept that up. Um, I don't know what he's had to write about. All he's been doing is looking at moths and ants and bees and going for walks. But I'm sure it's all in the diary. So, uh, let's have a look at that. Oh, and I believe he's only going to write it down the... We went to the park and had a brew. Suzanne read the paper while I played with the ladybird. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, it's like a child, isn't it? It's like what a child would like. Suzanne read the paper while I played with the ladybird. <laughs> <laughs> His only friend is a beetle. <laughs> it climbed up my arm. It struggled on me hairs. This is in detail then. Yeah, 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 yeah. It kept stopping every now and then and was rubbing its head with its right arm. It did it about four times and always used its right arm. It rested for about five minutes, then flew off. Sunday. Had a bit of a to-do with Suzanne because she wanted a lion today. I ate this. Once you're awake, you should get up. I got up and put the radio on really loud. She eventually got up. 
I told her insects don't have lines, <laughs> so we shouldn't. <laughs> Why are you obsessed I with mean, insects? You must be fucking unbearable to live with. <laughs> you, you must be a nightmare. No, I've just started, because I've watched insects a lot, I don't want to keep going on about them because we've, we're a bit insect heavy, but at the end of the day, if we if we copied insects, we wouldn't go far wrong. I don't know what you mean, though. One minute you're saying they're great, then the next minute you'll slag them off. Yeah, I'll slag some of them off if I don't know what they're doing, but because I've studied them a bit longer, I just think they, they do You haven't right. studied them, though. He, he thinks he's like Darwin. You, but you just slagged them off again, don't you think people that insects are doing stuff, they're not. It yeah, goes there, ants, then it goes back again. The ant was. The ant was messing about. But only that one, the others were carrying stuff. That's what I'm saying. These snidey ones in everything. In every everything in the world, you get a hierarchy. <laughs> Long words. Ooh. The bookshelf was dusty, so Suzanne asked me to dust it if I get a minute. I ended up looking at every book. <laughs> Just the spine. Yeah. Just for a few seconds each. Yeah. Didn't open them. I looked in the dictionary to see if the word dictionary would be in the dictionary. I didn't think they would bother with it being on the front page, but it was in the book. I think I did some work for her, I did some editing for her to sort of show off my skills and that. <laughs> sure. And she was like, oh, you're good at this, aren't you? I was like, yeah. And I think she got us another drink because I was, I was doing that editing for her in my own time. So you're up. You're up on the deal, aren't you? Because I, I know now, I know for a fact, that you've not spent any money on her in 11 years. So you are, you're 40p up. <laughs> at least. <laughs> Lawrence from New York says, I was wondering how Mr. K. Dilkington would interpret this famous saying of philosopher Ludwig Wittgenstein. The quote is, if a lion could talk, we could not understand him. Even if he's English. Yeah, if he... <laughs> yeah, if a lion could speak English, so there's no language barrier, he's speaking English words and using all the correct uh, grammar and everything, but you wouldn't be able to understand what he was saying. Why? Because it is from a different world. His frames of reference would be so bizarre that you wouldn't be able to get a grasp on what he was talking about because you'd have so little in common... Even if he used real words. No, but he's talking English. Yeah, no, but his reference points would be just so far removed. You know, they're removed slightly when, uh, uh, if you saw two people talking about Kierkegaard, you'd, un you'd, you'd, I hear... won't understand that. Exactly. So remove that a billion times to a different species with different input. No, but it depends. If I'm talking to a lion in London Zoo. Yeah. He'll, he'll be saying, oh, I'm fed up of being stuck in here. I'll go, in here. <laughs> It's like that. It depends what his background <laughs> is. I mean, there's some people who might have lived down the road from me, but have a totally different life. Absolutely. So it doesn't matter that it's a lion, does it? Well, yeah, because they're just trying to remove it even more. So, so now it's not just a bloke who lived a few doors away. Now it's not even a bloke. Now it's not even... Yeah, but I'd, I'd pick something... Smaller, yeah. or, right. or something, you know, a worm without a mouth, that would go, definitely not. What? Definitely, definitely not, not what? what? I wouldn't be having a chat with it. I just I just think that a worm that's that's on the ground, yeah. what's it got to offer me? <laughs> it's, it's blind and it hasn't got a mouth. It's not going to be a good day out with it, is what I'm saying. It's not going to have that much to say to me, even if it's English. Right. Yeah, even if it's English. And how can you tell if a worm is English? Is it wear a very tiny bowler hat? <laughs> oh, Christ. But do you understand... What about a jellyfish? No, I, you see, I think that's where you, you can you can say you wouldn't be able to have a good chat with them. Because, to me, the sea might as well be another world. Yeah. Right? Yeah. Um, in a way, I, I think the fish sort of have more rights than us. What do you mean? Just because... When, when whoever made the world, right, yeah. say, you know, we were just bigging up God, but if yeah. I was, was to have a go at him, yeah. I'd say, you added too much water. <laughs> <laughs> Criticism one to God, right? right. So, <laughs> you, well, how would you have changed that? Just, just more land. Fair enough. Now, why, <laughs> why, are the, why have fish got more rights than us? That because, was what I was because, because there's loads of them. And when you look at the amount of sea on the world, right, there's, there's loads of that. You only have to, like, like, you know, I was in Malaga the other week, right? And, you know, you look in the sea, there's loads of different fish. 
uh, and that's just in like eight foot water. If you go miles out, there's like all sorts of weird fish, isn't there, with like lights on them and everything. So, and there's just millions of different types. Yeah. Yeah. Now, <laughs> but why does that mean they've got more rights than us? Just because I think, wh you know, rights come in in numbers, don't they? If you know what I mean. Like, if there's one of you shouting, people go, oh, he's an idiot, shut up, whatever. If there's loads of you shouting, they go, oh, best listen to them, see what they've got to say. Right. And, and that's what I mean about fish. <laughs> yeah. There's loads of fish. Right. So... But they're not really making their voices heard, though, are they, Carl? Yeah. I know, because they're underwater. <laughs> but, what, but what I mean is... I don't know what I mean. <laughs> <laughs> Carl, right? What what do you think it's like being a crab? If you if you could go now your mind into a crab, what would you see? Where would you be? What would you be doing? What would you be thinking? What would you think of all the other things, the crabs you'd see, the the, the squids you'd see? What what what's it like, do you think? I want you to it's like creative writing, just think, just let yourself go. Come on. Uh it's gotta be a crab. What do you think of a slug? What do you think it would be a slug? What would you do if you were if you were transported now into a slug, what would you do? And you and Suzanne, you're suddenly in the kitchen, but you're a slug, and Suzanne's sort of like there, just making tea and that. How do you let her know I'd, it's you? It's impossible. I'd just chuck myself into the salt pot. Or something. <laughs> no, because what what do you do? I'd I'd hate that. I'd hate, that would be horrible. That. <laughs> oh God. Have you ever read uh, Franz Kafka's Metamorphosis, Not in which a man so. wakes up and he's turned into a giant beetle? And that's the uh, that's the whole story. Uh, I think it might be of interest to you. So what happened to him with the beetle? Well, I don't want to ruin it for you in case you no, read it. I won't but be it's, reading it. Don't worry. He joined a pop group with three other people. He was brilliant. No, it's a really wonderful book. It's a kind of almost heartbreaking because, of course, he uh, he does like Ricky saying. He finds it very hard then to relate to other people, even though he still has the consciousness of a human. You know, his parents, his rest of his family, they don't know how to deal with him. You know, because he, he's a giant beetle, he becomes a freak. He becomes an outsider. It's terrible, you but, know. But hang on, though. Is he a giant beetle? Or yeah. Is he... Well, yeah, well, that's not going to go down well, is it? <laughs> that's, that course, people aren't going to like you. But if it's a normal-sized one, then you just get in with the other beetles, don't you? <laughs> Whereas if you're but a you'd giant... Be sort of How would you do that? How would you ingratiate yourself? Right, so you're suddenly a beetle. You're Carl Pilkington, right? There's other beetles. They're doing their business. They're scuttling around... <laughs> And you go, you go in there, and you go, and they go, they look at you as a new beetle. What, what's your first? What do you do? How do you ingratiate yourself? Well, for a bit, I wouldn't, I wouldn't sort of barge in into their house and that. I'd, I'd wait until they're out and about, and I'd, I'd like, like in life, right? Um, sort of help them out. I don't know what beetles do all day. I've never seen one doing anything. They just seem to be going from one place to another. Right. I've never seen them carrying anything. I don't know what they eat. I don't know what they do. I don't know how we've got them, right? But what I mean is, I'd watch them and I'd sort of help them out. And I mean, you know, it's like going on a date or meeting a woman, isn't it? But what if you there is? Whoa, a whoa, hang on. What do you mean? What, what, how, how is it like going on a date with a woman? Well, it's like I said about Suzanne with her hot chocolate. She bought me that, and I've gone. She's all right. Right. right? She gets me another one before I know it. She's living with me. So. It's, you so you're, you, you're, all these those beetles, they're scrubbing around, right? You're sort of like watching them, and there's, and then you realise that you want to mate with this female beetle. What do you do? What's your first move? Yeah, but I don't know what beetles do, do I? So I don't know how, how what you do. I don't know if you go up and go, all right. What do they do? How do they get on? Whoa! It's a different world. I, I don't know yet, do I? Because they haven't done it. Would but you feel bad because having your own mind in this beetle, right? Would you feel bad shagging a beetle? Would you feel that that was, that was a bit sick because you've got a human mind? Well, no, because you just close your eyes and that, wouldn't you? And go oh, pretend to think of something else. So get round it that way. There's no point getting down about it because I'm stuck now as a beetle. So you've got to get on with it. <laughs> but if you're a slug, you said you'd throw yourself in the salt pot. What would you do if you're a beetle if you got depressed? And you see all the other humans. No, you see but, your mates, right? They got they're, they're listening to the iPod. What would you do? But no, that's what I'm saying. Though beetles are different because they mm -hmm. do tend to hang about with each other. A slug's always on its own. <laughs> it's a lonely insect, isn't it? It's, it's not an insect. All right, what is it? A mollusk. Right, they're lonely. 
I've never seen a load of snails all together or slugs wandering about. Those beetles seem to knock about in crowds. <laughs> yeah. So, yeah. oh god. Okay, right, another one. So they're sociable creatures, and it wouldn't bother you that you're that you've got the mind of Carl Pilkington in there, because you uh, can't communicate with these people because they don't speak English. They don't. They don't have any communication with you. Yeah, but if it's happened to me, there'll be another one in there. Okay then. Right. Okay. Um. What would you do, right? <laughs> That's the most disgusting thing. What could it be? Um. Right. What What would you do, right? If you were suddenly a fly. Right, and you're knocking around with the flies, right? And you had to land on some uh, excrement. Yeah. What would you do? Yeah, but I don't have to. What do you mean? You're a fly. You're yeah, but I it. wouldn't. No, I wouldn't be loving it, though, would I? <laughs> Why? Because of me in that fly's head. <laughs> so I'd, I just, I don't think other flies would be going. Come on, join in. I'd just be like, no, I'll, I'll wait here, yeah. wait, watch, and that. Because they don't. I don't see why they have to do that. What would you do, right, if you had to go back and you were in a, um, you were, had to go and put your mind in, like, the, um, an un, uh, hatched egg of something? Like, maybe one of those, e like, uh, that a wasp was injected with a spider. So you know you're in an egg, right, which is really uncomfortable, in a spider. How would you feel about that, Carl? You're a baby wasp in the abdomen of a spider. And I know everything that I know now. I'm, I'm sat in there. Yeah. And now I'm now I'm in a spider as a ba as an unborn wasp. What the f am I doing here? What's going on? I don't know what I'll do there. Uh, will they try and sleep? <laughs> There's nothing else to do though, is there? I just pray to God it never happens. And I believe it, he's written it down! Well, that's the jingle that signals it's time for more extracts from Carl's diary. And uh, we'll lunge straight into it. Wandered down Carnaby Street. There was a happy homeless fella. I gave him £1.50. I thought of a tongue twister after giving him the money. It goes, if you can't treat a cheerful tramp, what sort of tramp can you treat? It's good, that. All right. Say it fast. If you can't treat a cheerful tramp, what sort of tramp can you treat? Good, isn't it? Good, that, yeah. You've got too much time on your hands, Carl. <laughs> Learned some famous quotes to see if they are as good as my sayings. Number one, treat every day as if it's your last. Very famous saying. Now, is that something you do, Carl? Um, but you know, my me, me problem with that one is that if it was your last, you wouldn't want to be doing much. That's, that's the only problem I've got with that. I wouldn't want to, you know, go to a fairground or whatever. Because you're going, oh, it's my last day, what am I going to do? And I think you'd spend so much time worrying about what you're going to do that you'd end up staying in. I think you're right. Um, you've taken some of the poetry out of it. I think it means live life to the fullest. Right? I like the fact that you were amusing on the idea that if it was your last day, you'd go to the fair. <laughs> 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 it's getting such a 19th century way of spending your final day. I know, yeah. yeah. Um, well, the thing is, the, the other thing is that um, the only thing that people get depressed about in terms of sort of like, um, you know, life and death is... Uh, not the knowledge that they're going to die, but more the knowledge that they know they're going to die when they're dying. If someone told you um, no one ever knows when they're going to die, no one ever gets an illness, no one ever gets hit by a truck, everyone passes away peacefully in their sleep, dreaming they're riding a big marshmallow, right? Then you wouldn't care about anything. It wouldn't matter, when, it wouldn't matter if you died tomorrow or in 30 years' time. You would just live life to the full. You'd come. You'd you'd have it. Every day would be great. You'd go out. You'd come back. You'd fall asleep. That would be amazing. There'd be no stress. There'd be no. There'd be no angsty. Oh, we're all gonna die. Stress because it wouldn't matter. Because it would just be your life. Wouldn't it be amazing if someone guaranteed you, Carl, you're gonna die in your sleep? I'm not gonna tell you when. Yeah, but you'd... some people do, don't they? Well, exactly. Yeah, but I we never know we're going to because we we stress. What if we get a dreadful illness? What if we, you know? But know. but we're almost not letting people die naturally anymore, are we? Because we're always bodging stuff up. What do you mean? Well, someone who might naturally die in the sleep aren't allowed to naturally die in the sleep because they wake them up with those electric things 
and get them going again and pop in a new lung or whatever whilst they're at it. That's what I'm saying. They don't just... You never hear it anymore, do you? Frank peacefully died in his sleep. No, he died on the operating table whilst we were putting in a new lung. They never... They don't die naturally anymore. <laughs> Frank died peacefully with 40,000 volts going through them and a couple of people going, Clear! Clear! Rushing about today. Got to get a lot done as I'm flying to Malaga tomorrow to see my mum and dad. Don't like flying. I'd be happy if they give you a parachute instead of a life jacket. They say Da Vinci invented the parachute as well as the helicopter. He never got round to making them though because he only drew them on some paper. Got up at 5am as I had to get to Heathrow to get on the plane to see mum and dad in Malaga. Went out for a drink with a cousin who lives in Spain. Ain't seen him for 27 years. Oh, that must have been tricky, making conversation. I didn't really bother. Because <laughs> where do you start? I might no, as well go up to anyone in the street and start having a chat. <laughs> yeah, you have to go further back than, uh, did you want Chantal to win Big Brother? <laughs> yeah. Me dad and me talked about history. I said we shouldn't go on about things that happened ages ago because I bet something similar has happened more recently. Brilliant. <laughs> Read about an island in the Indian Ocean where there are tribesmen still living like they're cavemen. A helicopter tried to land and the tribesmen chucked spears at them. This is what I meant about not having to talk about things that happened ages ago. We have got new cavemen now, so why do we talk about the old ones? People could have lived before, but computers and all that blew up and books got burnt, so all they had left was what these tribesmen have got left. Ramblings <laughs> and that's of the a mad man. Of a maniac. That I mean, that's a just a few hours before you go crazy with a gun in there. No, but what, what I mean there is, right... Mm. Say if all this has happened before, right? Podcasting's been happening years ago. Mm. Something happens. Again, right? lot of your information from the Planet of the Apes. <laughs> Something happens. World ends, mm. right? We come back again somehow. Yeah. It's the detail <laughs> it's you leave yeah. out that makes yeah. you intriguing. Just like the watch that you can wear that uh, tells you when you're going to die. How does it work? Pop it on your wrist. That's all the detail you need. So, the world happened, no. we came back, we... Um, yeah. Have you seen the pictures? <laughs> Forget it, then, if you don't get it. It's interesting that you had all those profound thoughts about this, this period in the past <clears throat> when they all lived, but you still, you still found it uh, appropriate to include at the end of that. It says the tribesmen wave their knobs about when they've had enough of having visitors. That's what's what it said in the paper, that's what happens. They're quite happy. What paper is this that you're reading? It was it was in it was in like a paper a couple of days ago. It said um, they don't mind having visitors if they're bringing them coconuts and stuff that they can eat. Once they've got everything they need, they start waving the tackle about, and that means like right, leave now. Which you would, wouldn't you? <laughs> yeah, at a dinner party. Uh, my grandfather used to do that. <laughs> uh, well now, well now, well now. What have we here? I'm here to tell you all about Friday Night Comedy on Channel 4. Uh, there's three great comedies. Green Wing, It's Nearly Ready, My Name is Earl, and The It Crowd. Uh, the great new comedy from the creator of Father Ted. And what have we here? Jingle, jangle, jingle, jangle as it happens. Friday Night Comedy, this Friday on Channel 4. Switch it on. Now then, well now, the young man. Uh, well now, now then, well now, now then, young man. Oh, did that in that? Monkey News! Ah, uh, that jingle is getting more annoyed by the week. Well, this is the final Monkey News, right? I'm not, I'm not doing this anymore, right? Because we've we've covered it all. All the Monkey News has been covered. It has, it has. We've done, we've done loads of them. I think all the news that needs to be sort of known has been told, right? Um, that is the end of the news. Jesus Christ! <laughs> what? Get on with it. Right, do you know, um, oh. in the first, uh, podcast that we did, we, uh, chatted about the monkey that went into space and stuff. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So where we left So it, haven't you got a real, no, a new monkey news? Well, it's an update, isn't it? I mean, Is it the, new? No, has it happened recently? Has it happened since podcast one? I have to pick Ricky up on the point that he thinks any of the monkey news we've heard... <laughs> A happened, and B <laughs> happened recently. It almost always happened in olden times, or ages ago. Uh, oh, you're right, it never happened. <laughs> right, anyway, so like I say, 
The first monkey news, it was about this monkey that went into space. This was the one that was fed by bananas that came out of a little chute on the spacecraft. Yeah, it went it went up there, uh, did a really good job. It was taught how to press the buttons, hit the left button for a banana, you know. Right button to, to go right and make history and go, go into right space. Right, um Ooh, what do I want? Not more banana. You haven't taken off yet? Ah, yeah, more banana. Oh, we shouldn't have given him a choice of banana or a change history. We should have the right button. We should have fed him before he went and only had a right button. He's at the left button again. He's just eating bananas up there. What's going on? It's costing us a fortune. No. Press the right button and do something. Oh, bananas. Ah, he hit the left button again, the little... So anyway, yeah, I told you, he went up there, he came back, he could never get that... The high, high exactly, again. yeah. You know mm. what I mean? He tried other things. I think he tried to get a band together and that. <laughs> <laughs> Right, yeah. so anyway, there was, there was loads of monkeys that were signed up to this NASA program. And it was 1961 when this little monkey called Ham, that was his name, so mm. a bit of an update. That's, that's the same one as I talked about, his right. name was Ham. As well as him, there was one called Enos. He, he went round the world loads of times. So anyway, what I found out about it since then, um, Ham went up there, did the left-right business with the bananas, Enos, um, they didn't put as much work into the trip when, when he went up there, and something went wrong with the machinery, and do you know how you get a banana for the left button and all that? Mm. It's official it, now. <laughs> yeah. There's two buttons in this spaceship, banana dispenser and everything else. The right <laughs> button is everything else. <laughs> but, but it worked the other way. The machinery went weird. Oh no, really? So, so it meant that the right button would give him a banana. Right. The left button did everything else. Oh, no. How did so that, what, how did so that what had been though? taught, what, 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 this is the problem with, with electronics, isn't it? Well, no, I don't it think no, it is. <laughs> Apparently this is the problem. But the good th I mean, honestly, look it up if you want. This is all online, by the so way. So what happened when it all went haywire? What, what occurred? Well, look, Carl, Carl, this is online and it's bollocks. Luckily, um, Enos, because he'd, he'd, he'd done a few trips. <laughs> right, you've so experienced. So he was right, well, I know this isn't right. <laughs> As much as I love bananas, <laughs> this isn't right. <laughs> so, was his thinking, of course it was. So anyway, so he came back, they, they were all like over the moon with him. He said, know, I can't good, work with these conditions. Good mission and everything, well done on working it out. He sorted all that out. Um, it moved on a few years. Armstrong's gone up there, Buzz and that other fella. They've been up there, the, the monkeys aren't needed anymore. Mm. But they were like, we've got all these monkeys who have done NASA training. Mm. What are we going to do with them all? Mm. And they mm. had to raise fourteen million pounds mm. to make them like a, a like an old sort of chimp home for retired <laughs> As for retired NASA trained monkeys chimpanots chimpanots something they've got in there is like a little museum right of all the missions and that that they've been on so they can sort of even though they're not going to be going into space again they can almost relive it and reminisce mm -hmm. of the times that they've had. And They're reminiscing with each other, are they? Just, just sort of going, oh, remember that ones. time when it all went wrong, the button became the left when it should have yeah. been the right and all the rest of yeah. it. They're just, you know, sort talking of about old times, talking yeah. about old times and what have you, like old people like to do. Yeah, sure. Um, and yeah, that's it. So if you want to, like, give give some money to towards their home, right. you can go to, like, savethechimps.org. And it's all there, all that, all that information that I've given you. It's all there. You can. I'd be surprised out. if all the information you've given us is there. It's all there. I'd be very surprised. It's all there, just retired, you know, monkeys and that, who've done the bit. Perhaps we should retire monkey news to that same space. That's what I mean, so, you know, I hope you've enjoyed the monkey news and that, that was the, the last one. Look after the monkeys, uh, do your bit, because they've done their bit, uh, that's it, yeah. But just because I'm not given the news, look it up, do you know what I mean, it's all out there. Don't be ignorant. <laughs> Wise words. Carl needs your money. I, if you could see what I see now, he's just looking at me with this. He just, he just needs stuff, don't you, Carl? What do you need? What do you need? Just something more than nothing. <laughs> <laughs>
For information on the archive of the podcast, these last 12 shows, and for the new podcast to come, go to rickygervais.com. You can register there. We'll send out loads of information. Uh, plus, you'll just find out links to, uh, to how to get all, these, uh, all this stuff that we're, that we're offering out there. There's also a free taster if you just can't wait for more of Carl's nonsense. Make sure, please, that you register uh, your email and everything so we can get in touch and just tell you what's going to happen uh, with the Ricky Gervais show, with Carl's mind, and with everything else. rickygervais.com. Go there. Makes perfect sense. Uh, it's the it's the end of an era, but the start of a new one. It's almost seamless in a way, isn't it? The end and the beginning. But Carl, what do you think about that? How things end and new things begin. Um, well, I suppose you've got to have an end for a beginning. So it's just a bit odd that we've got an end and having a beginning. Cool. That's science for you. <laughs> <laughs> Hello, and welcome back to the first in the third series of the Ricky Gervais Show, with me, Ricky Gervais, Stephen Merchant... Hello there. ...and the fool, the round-headed buffoon that is Carl Pilkington. All right. We've been away filming um, our second series of extras, uh, leaving Carl to his own devices in a sweltering London. We've had a heat wave here in the capital city, haven't we, Carl? It's been all right. It's been up to 100 degrees, record-breaking temperatures. Yeah. What have you been doing, though? Uh, sort of enjoyed it a little bit, was out and about. Yeah. Getting to see the place, having loads of walks, and that, I like to have walks. You know, watching what <laughs> like people Like a dog. <laughs> <laughs> yeah! When, when he jumps off the couch and <laughs> starts exactly. scratching against the door... <laughs> Suzanne thinks, it's time. <laughs> <laughs> it's, it's, walk. it's just good thinking time, though, isn't it? Uh, as well, having a walk. You've got no other clutter going on around you. Right. And you just think about a lot of stuff. And, you know, like, like say, with the weather being hot and stuff, a lot of insects knocking about. Right. So I've just been watching them. <laughs> so, so while we've been filming a TV show, you've been watching insects? Yeah, just seeing, because everybody knows insects are out there, but no one's keeping an eye on them. <laughs> Why, <laughs> what are they up to? What are you worried <laughs> about? Well, Steve, you wouldn't be laughing like that if you'd, if you'd watch them, because <laughs> they do some weird stuff and that, yeah. is what I mean. What yeah. sort of stuff? Any examples? Uh, I saw a bee have a heart attack. <laughs> <laughs> you saw a bee have a heart attack? Yeah. How were you sure it was a heart attack? Because what happened, I'd, I'd been... Did it the... clutch its chest with all six legs? No, I'd Were there some of... other little bee paramedics? No, no, I'd, I'd just been out in the park anyway, just looking at, you know, uh, caterpillars knocking about. Uh, butterflies and stuff, so I was sort of... So, uh, so when Suzanne goes to work, she goes, Carl, don't you waste the day. Just because you don't work at the radio station anymore, I want you to do some constructive stuff. And you go, yeah, I am, yeah. And so you, so in your head suddenly goes... <laughs> and he goes, he goes out... Oh, there's a moth. <laughs> but, but the thing is, so I'd been in the park and I was aware of the insects that are around us more than like most of the time and I come out of the park just crossing like a, a sort of a busy road and what have you and I saw this bee to the right of me sort of in the air and it was a big one and I was a bit like oh let's watch that and um he just fell it <laughs> fell from the air in front of me and it was it... on the pavement and I thought oh what's going on here and I, I, I looked at it for a bit and it was really still gave it a little kick just to see if there was any movement nothing Stone, sort of, what's the saying? Stone cold dead. <laughs> yeah! Stone cold be dead. So, yeah. uh, that, that I was... like the fact that this bee suddenly saw Carl and had a heart attack. Yeah. It'd never seen anything that round before. Yeah. It just thought, it, it had approached him because he thought it was a sunflower. <laughs> My right. God, it's a giant walking orange. Every dream has come true. <laughs> oh! No, but it just summed up life for me. I thought, that, that's, that's like us, isn't it, at the end of the day? They have heart attacks, stress. <laughs> you put it down to stress, do you? Well, it's in London, isn't it? You know, everything has stresses from living here. And they are bald, aren't they? They've got fur all over, but they lose the... And always overweight. <laughs> <laughs> it was a fat, bald bee! Oh. So what did you, it fell to the floor and you, you instantly, you just kicked it, you didn't attempt no, to revive it? No, I waited a second it. and just looked at it to see if there was any, you know, leg movement or wing, and there was nothing, <laughs> and then when I sort of kicked it, it was sort of hard, it had hardened already, it was just... Rigor mortis had set in. Rigor mortis had set in. Did it put you in a bad mood for the day? Because I know things like that can just send you over the edge for the day. 
Uh, death and that does a bit. Suzanne doesn't like me talking about death. What riveting conversations do you come up with? No, just things like uh, one of our mates has had a baby recently, and I just was saying, oh, when that's sort of our age, we'll nearly be dead. Think of that. That's the first thing he says is a new life brought into the world. <laughs> I know. Well, when he's our age, we'll be dead. Yeah. No, Maybe weird. they'll let you do the speech at the christening. Yeah, it's just, you know, so like I say, just, just insect life and that, it's interesting. You say it's interesting, but do you care about really finding out about them? Do you really care about what bees do or ants do? You look at them and you make up your own world. For example, it had a heart attack, it's stress, it's overweight. You know nothing. I could, I could probably, why don't you, why don't you look something up, you know, honeybees are fascinating, you know, uh, honeybees, they've been, they've been around making honey for a hundred million years, that's incredible, their wings beat over 11,000 times a minute. And he's thinking, no wonder I had a heart attack. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, exactly, but they're, fat. do you know, do you know, um, bees, like ants, are actually like specialised wasps, they're sort of, they're sort of developed from the same... Family. Huh? Family, like. Well, yeah. Yeah. Doesn't surprise me. Doesn't surprise you, though. Does it interest you in any way? Um, well, everything's linked to something, isn't it? It's like how they say we're from monkeys and that. Yeah. It's all the same sort of thing. Yeah. Well, yeah, I've been watching loads of stuff. I've been watching ants. You mentioned ants. <laughs> uh, I've had a lot of moths in the house. They're sort of I sad. I mean, you, you say it like it was yeah. a garden party. No, yeah. it's, just, it's just all these things, you, you look at them, I mean, you, you go into the scientific bit saying, you know, it likes honey or whatever. Uh, it doesn't like honey. That The reason they store honey is to get them through the winter when there's not, like, nectar, or nectar's hard to get and they store it. And they store too much, which is why we can skim a little bit off the top. We're like agents. <laughs> yeah, well, but, but all I'm saying is I look at more about what its life is like as a well, person. No, you don't. You don't. You guess. You make it up. You don't look into it at all. No, but you can... A bit of guesswork is you, you're pretty close to the truth most of the time. Why? What do you mean? Well, I don't, I, that, that statement sums you up. A bit of guesswork is pretty close to the truth. Because if you watch something long enough, is what I'm saying, you can see that it's, it's a bit clueless. It's the same way about ants or, you know, they're hard workers and all that. I watch one. It's going back and forth all the time. They go one way and then they stop and go the other way. They try to look busy in front of the mates, but if you watch one, <laughs> if you watch one long enough, it's back and forwards and it's like he's done nothing there. I'm going to carry this twig back and forth until I can knock off it four. There's a lot of that going on. Is there? Because uh, there's not. There's none of that going on. There is. There's no, like I say, the moth, depressing little sort of thing. <laughs> Why is it depressing? Just. Just the way it hasn't got, it hasn't got eyes, has it? You just look at it, it, hasn't, it doesn't know what's going on. I just don't. Th I think if you haven't got eyes, you shouldn't have wings. <laughs> <laughs> That's a rule. If we could put that into practice, please. <laughs> That's a great rule. That's a fantastic rule, isn't it? Yeah. If you haven't got eyes, you shouldn't have wings. Certainly true of people thinking of becoming an air pilot. <laughs> You know, whilst you've been working and that, I've been travelling about a bit, just seeing, seeing the country and that. Mm. Went to um, Dorset, right? A uh, nice beach there. Uh, and do you know those huts you get, like a hut on the beach? and you, Oh, where you get changed? You can get changed in it, but they, they're better than that. It's like you can put a telly in it, uh, sofa if you want. Oh, you don't mean the Victorian changing yeah, huts? Yeah, you mean like... Sort of things. It, it's sort of bigger than that. Yeah. And... Um, we were walking down there and there was a really sort of big fat family in one of them. There was about four of them. And you could tell that they'd never had a game of anything, do you know what I mean? they yeah. just sit down there eating ice cream, looking at the sea and what have you. And the weird thing is, the little fat kid, the youngest one, who must have been, I don't know, about eight, he was really fat to the point of you couldn't see his neck. Yeah. And he sat, he sat at the front of his mum and dad and his older sister. He sat there... And he had a frisbee, and I thought, look, they, they don't want to play with him. I mean, that's that's an active game to play, isn't it? Yeah. A frisbee. As we got closer, he was just using it to eat Maltesers out of. <laughs> 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 I just thought, even again, you know, the one active thing he's got, he's using it to eat out of. <laughs> yeah. 
extraordinary. And that just sums up what people are like <laughs> when it comes to keeping oh. fit and activities. Oh, that's fantastic. Were you sporty, uh, Rick? Uh, I was, yeah. I loved it. I absolutely loved it. Were you good at it? Um, I was good at some things. Uh, was never good at rugby. Never good at cricket. Uh, was alright at football. But those things were the more competitive things that were scary. So at my school, when you're surrounded by, like, people that are, uh, the fun is hurting someone. Well, it's weird you say it, because I remember the first day I went to play cricket, my mum said, as I was leaving, I was really excited about playing cricket, she went, be careful, I was walking across a playing field once, a cricket ball hit me on the head, I was unconscious for two hours. Freaked me out, on yeah, the well, way to play cricket, I thought, okay, always t scared of the ball, because it's obviously, as you say, rock solid. I remember a couple of seasons later, I had to play rugby for the first time. As I was leaving the house, she went, be careful with rugby. I knew a kid once broke his back playing it. I was terrified of rugby. I mean, I was yeah, terrified scared, of rugby. Such a scary game. The ball came to me, I got rid of it immediately. It's uh, mental. Uh, uh, yeah. I don't understand. What, I've, what I remember is, I remember a teacher saying, you've got to play it very carefully because you can get seriously injured, you can hurt yourself, you can be crippled for life. I remember thinking, why are we allowed to still play this game at school? I was worried about cracking heads. Yeah. And a finger in the eye. How is it not bad? That worried me all the time, a finger in the eye. Like, uh, but they removed the asbestos from schools in the 60s and 70s. But yeah. rugby is allowed to play. It's mental. Yeah. You see, I, I had a mate called Mark who liked playing cricket, right? And when I, when I used to say to my mum, oh, can I I'm just want to go out with Mark and his dad to play cricket? And she never used to let me go. She'd go, oh, I prefer, you know, you didn't. And I used to always think... That, you know, it's, it's because it's a dangerous sport, you can get it on the head by the ball, it's hard. Put an eye out or whatever. But it was because his dad, his dad used to drive us to the place to play cricket. And he had, um, his eyelids were too big. Mm -hmm. So, uh, he, he, he used to have to sort of have his head right back. <laughs> Look, it's like see. one of those old-fashioned dolls. Right. Yeah, 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 yeah. They clunk back yeah. and clunk forward again. And she didn't, uh, she didn't like me getting in a car with him. Sorry, who is this? Whose eyelids are too big? You, so, growing up, you had a woman who had her head like a bag of spuds. You yeah, had, I didn't know her. No, you had two kids at school with webbed hands and feet and big heads. Yeah. You had a pigeon chest boy. Nowadays you're walking around with insects and moths like something from James and the Giant Peach. Yeah, and you had a, a bloke whose eyelids were too big. One thing I've really, I noticed, because I occasionally go to the gym, and you know those guys who work out constantly to give themselves extraordinary physiques? Just that, you know, they're on the trip, they're on the weights, and they're really... You know, I noticed in the summer particularly, those guys cannot wait to get their shirts off. Yeah. Everywhere you see, they're walking around. If they've got a good good torso, they are walking shirts off. Even, I think, if you go to nightclubs, I notice there's always one guy who's thinking, well, I have put so much work into this body, I have got to get my shirt off on the dance a floor. A vest, yeah. You know, and it comes straight off. A brand new tattoo. I'm not covering that up. Exactly. I've paid a lot for it. Let's see it. Yeah, yeah. But that's what we were saying about bodies. I can't remember why we were talking about it. We've got to a point in science now that you can change your head. Right. No, well, that, that doesn't make any sense at all. It, it was a program, uh, and it was done in the 50s or 60s, where they stuck a, a monkey's brain on a stick and had it wired up, and it still worked, right? Right, okay. And that was in, like, the 60s or Right, okay. Well, so, to, well to, to say the change your head makes no sense at all, because just, if you put a, a, a different head on a different body, you're changing the body. Yeah, I know. Well, that's what I'm about to say to you, though. What? That's what I'm saying. That I'd be more confident... If I had someone else's body, because if anyone dissed it, I can go, oh, no, it's bad, isn't it? But it's what not are you mine. talking about? Well, it's, it's like, say, um... As opposed to someone else's head? Yeah. Well, what it wouldn't be me, would it? My, the head is me. Well, of course it is, that's yeah. what I mean. Yeah, so what do you mean? Me. You'd be happier having someone else's body. What, than your own? What I mean is, say if, um, you're wandering about, for some, for some reason, there's an incident, you have to take your top off and that, and everyone's looking at you, right, and you're a bit sort of, you know, you haven't got the muscles and that, you haven't got the six pack. Right. Uh, which isn't that nice anyway, I don't know why that's become a nice thing, really, seeing the insides of you. You <laughs> might as well, <laughs> I mean, I know not... I came up with the see-through skin idea, but it's, it's a bit weird, isn't it? You can see stuff. No, no, it's the muscle in front of the... No, it's not. Sometimes it is. You can it's, see, not the, like, it's not the tubes. outline of your no, organs. No, you can't see tubes. You can see tubes and veins and stuff. Well, you can see veins. Yeah, well, I don't want to see that. That's why we've got skin over it. 
it's well, stop I mean. looking at naked men then. Well, no, you but keep... sometimes you can't help it because it's been hot and, it, like you say, it's people walking around with vests on and that. So anyway, what I'm saying is, say if some incident happened, I'm walking about with my top off. Right. Girls are laughing at me, right? Why? Don't know, they might. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, go on. So they wouldn't look at your body, they'd all look at your head. So, so what I mean is, yeah. rewind that, right, and imagine yeah. all that happens again, but I've, I've got someone else's body. Right. Whose right? body? Uh, just some fella who's died and, I, and my body was injured and they said, we've got a new body in. You right. can have it. We'll yeah. stick your head on it. Yes. Yeah. Now say if... if They're laughing at you. Uh, They're they laughing at the body. They're laughing yeah. at the body. Yeah. But at least I'd be able to sort of go, I know it's a mess, but it's not mine. At least I don't have to claim ownership. So, so all of this extraordinary technology that can make a head, put one head on another person's body, so you can go, ah, it's not my body. Oh, no. But, and but it's not your own. I'm not being funny, though. So if you have a body transplant, right, and you're there, you're at home, yeah. naked, you look down, yeah. lovely penis and a set of testicles. Yeah. Right? What do you do with them? What do you mean? What am I doing with them? Well, do you like them? Well, you wouldn't, you wouldn't mess about with them as much as if they were your own. <laughs> <laughs> but if you did mess about with them, would you feel guilty that you were messing about with another man's testicles and... And it's the full body? Yeah. No, because they're not my hands either. So what you're doing is watching someone else wank. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> well, one thing Carl has been doing over the past few months is writing his diary. He's kept that up. Um, I don't know what he's had to write about. All he's been doing is looking at moths and ants and bees and going for walks. But I'm sure it's all in the diary. So uh, let's have a look at that. Oh, I don't believe he's only going to run it down the... We went to the park and had a brew. Suzanne read the paper while I played with a ladybird. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, it's like a child, isn't it? It is like what a child would do. <laughs> Suzanne read the paper while I played with a ladybird. <laughs> His only friend is a beetle. <laughs> it climbed up my arm. It struggled on me hairs. This is in detail, then. Yeah, 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 yeah. It kept stopping every now and then and was rubbing its head with its right arm. It did it about four times and always used its right arm. It rested for about five minutes, then flew off. Sunday. Had a bit of a to-do with Suzanne, because she wanted a lion today. I ate this. Once you're awake, you should get up. I got up and put the radio on really loud. She eventually got up. I told her insects don't have lions, <laughs> so we shouldn't. <laughs> Why are you obsessed I with mean, insects? I mean, you must be fucking unbearable to live with. <laughs> you, you must be a nightmare. No, I've just started, because I've watched insects a lot, I don't want to keep going on about them, because we've, we're a bit insect heavy, but at the end of the day, if we, if we copied insects, we wouldn't go far wrong. I don't know what you mean, though. One minute you're saying they're great, then the next minute you'll slag them off. Yeah, I'll slag some of them off if I don't know what they're doing, but because I've studied them a bit longer, I just think they, they do You haven't right. studied them, though. He, he thinks he's like Darwin. You, but you just slagged them off again, don't you think people that insects are doing stuff? They're not. It yeah, goes there, then it goes back again. The ant was. The ant was messing about. But only that one, the others were carrying stuff. That's what I'm saying. The snidey ones in everything. In every everything in the world, you get a hierarchy. <laughs> Long words. Ooh. The bookshelf was dusty, so Suzanne asked me to dust it if I get a minute. I ended up looking at every book. <laughs> <laughs> Just the spine. Yeah. Just for a few seconds each. Yeah. Didn't open them. I looked in the dictionary to see if the word dictionary would be in the dictionary. I didn't think they would bother with it being on the front page, but it was in the book.